we have, we're we're done. Done. There we go. Perfect. Okay. We, we haven't drawn any public. Have we? No. One day. I think one day we had one yeah, person. And sure had Christina Nelson showed up the first day. Oh, that's right. And then there was another lady to talk about. Okay, so we are live. Uh, so not morning, terribly, everyone. Not terribly exciting. Not terribly <laughs> exciting. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this meeting of the Guiding Principles Strategic Plan Ad Hoc Committee today, August the 5th at 9.05 a.m. Um, for those tuning in, yeah, we will be, uh, this meeting is going to go until noon, um, and we will discuss breaks along the way as need be. Um, so first, let's call this meeting to order. We'll do roll call. Uh, Wyatt. Here. Tom. Obviously here. <laughs> James. Here. Melissa. Here. <laughs> and Carrie is here. Uh, so welcome everyone. I did not attach the meet the meet the meeting notes from Wednesday to this meeting, although it was in the agenda. But I did push it to next week, so we won't be uh, ratifying notes today. Okay. Um, we'll do that um, next week, and so we can just roll right into our discussion as always. Um, and why I feel like you have a bit of a plan, so I'm going to hand everything over. You. Okay, so per, per Wednesday, I think we discussed going into housing mm -hmm. next. And so starting to think about what the goals are for the city in relationship to housing. So I, I put together, I think everybody's got a little one page. This is just a summation of where we're at. And housing is blank. And housing is blank because that's where we're at. <laughs> uh, so I thought, let's just maybe, I think we do a pretty good job if we just sort of, if someone wants to start with a discussion on housing. Um, and give a position. Kind of do yeah, Melissa. Implement the housing action plan. I think that's the, I think that's, yeah, the first thing that pops into my brain, mm -hmm. my gray matter. Did, did, did that, no. did, I thought that happened. So we, so the city approved it um, and we attached it to the growth policy as okay. an appendix. So, um, we have it now as a city. We've it's been approved okay. by the commission, so we can work now as a policy. Uh -huh. It's it's, well, it has, uh, it's so a recommendation like the growth policy. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the growth policy is so it's a like policy, a, but doesn't have it doesn't have any regulations attached. Right. So now is when we have to start saying, okay, what do we want to work on first, and we have to like vote on things or allocate right, money right, or build right. partnerships if it requires right, that property. Right, right. And, and I might, Melissa, because I know you. You sort of have the floor, but I might add, please add something to that. So I, why is this part of um, the housing coalition? So am I. Oh, cool. Um, and so implement the housing action plan is great, but I wonder if there's, I don't know if there's something a little stronger that we can put in there. Obviously, there's going to be things that this are not going to be appropriate actions for the city per se, mm -hmm. and more appropriate actions for maybe some of the working groups. Um, but then there might be other actions that will be more appropriate for the city. So I wonder, what do you think, Wyatt? Well, I appreciate the housing action plan. It's sort of like, it kind of like gives this summation of, like, if you're not informed on how to address housing issues, I think it does a really great job saying, like, here's the lay of the land and the need. And it's and a catalog. The, yeah, it's a catalog. Mm -hmm. And just like a list of ideas. Yeah. There's not a lot of verbs in it, though. No. So, so it does a really great job. Like if you didn't want to spend nine months educating yourself, you could just read that and you would be really well educated sure. at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. One thing because of my day job, I, as a commissioner, I have not been tracking every single thing that we've been working on because there's so much. So I have not been deeply involved in the housing action plan. Although housing has always been a high priority for me. Is there anything in it about land trusts? Because mm -hmm. from my yeah. day job, what I'm seeing is like that that's like a pretty solid, but it's one of it's one of the for, like, yeah. um, It is one of the options so, available. One of the tools. Cool. So if you if you think of the of the housing action plan as well as the tools. Yes, but did you talk about it as government being involved in land trusts? Because in sure. some communities in the Inner Mountain West, I believe they are, and it's just another way to keep things moving at a quicker rate. Um, so Here's what I would say about land trust. Yeah. So, like land trust, if you if, to really make it really simple, mm -hmm. right? You have like you have for profit sort of traditional development that's at market rate, 
and then you have some sort of either fixed or subsidized housing for for a non-market rate right? in whatever way in whatever way that it gets to a land trust is a way to create a secondary market mm -hmm. it is not the only way mm -hmm. to create a secondary market there's lots of ways so there's lots of ways there's deed restrictions mm -hmm. there's direct subsidies there's 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 plenty of ways to do that i think the the goal of land trust would be to try to create a secondary market in Livingston. Mm -hmm. There's also things that like we like we've yeah. started talking about like subsidizing homeowners to rent to locals mm -hmm. in a restricted way through an organization. That's so different. Well, it's different, but it's a secondary market creation, yeah. right? So instead mm -hmm. of saying, hey, let's let's do short-term rentals or let's rent to anybody, instead we're saying let's put an emphasis on local market. And it's particularly some homeowners, like at Big Sky, for instance, mm -hmm. they're talking about like even cheaper rates for people who work for nonprofits or work for the municipality, right? Mm -hmm. I think that the goal, or for the school would be another big one, or for or the, the school or the hospital. Yeah. Yep, things like that. I think the the goal should be to to create a vibrant secondary market in Livingston. That's what I was asking. Yeah, I yeah, think that sounds great. Can we put that then as like part well, of? A and can we put some? Do you think that it's a good idea to put a couple of examples of what? I, I mean, taking 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 apart that housing action plan. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's sizable and it's a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really. It just. It, I mean, it kind of struck me as a catalog. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really nothing you can pull. Yeah, it's a list of tools. So really it has all less action items in the group. Yeah, it has yeah. less. Yeah, it's but really I mean, just, just like, like a list. Ideas. It's a list of tools that, for one, a are legal to do in Montana because as we went through all the other options of things that you can do, a lot of things are not legal in the state. Um, and so it gives those. So really it was this group of people that got together to look at all these available tools to help with housing. And these are the 12 within the group that floated to the top, if that makes any sense. Well, if, yeah. we, can, if we can pull out specific examples, I like the things that you're bringing up. Well, why I, I was, you know, that's hard, but, but sort of knowing that this was coming up, sort of thought about it. I mean, the city can do two things, or, you know, in gross terms, it can do two things. It can either sort of relax regulations and zoning to allow more housing types, which is pretty much done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it has, yeah. yeah you, you've, you've pretty much, you know, Allowed the densification of almost every R two neighborhood and mm -hmm. and and the other ones, you know, and, the, and that's actually bearing some fruit. There's you, you see the little ADUs going on all over mm -hmm. town, and and uh, that's a that's a pretty effective way of doing things. Only because somebody doesn't have to buy land, and that cost of, goes out of the equation, which. Yeah, and helps. And helps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gets yeah. the cost not of having to buy, Not mm -hmm. having to buy land, it's a big deal. It gets well, that. It's cheaper to have the infrastructure with an ADM than it is. To well, so down. you were going to say there's regulations, then and there's, then there's and then there's proactive things that we can do, and that's what you were starting to talk about, right? I think again to, to carry your same analysis of what the city can do, you you can you can um, you can directly spend money on things like land. Or infrastructure, mm -hmm. or you can trade rights to developers or subsidies at lower rates for development. So there's like, and, and then there's regulations. So you can, and, and if you think about like cities around the states doing it different ways, in some cases, they're buying a land trust. Mm -hmm. And then they're buying the land, and then a developer is coming in and developing that. Mm -hmm. In some other cases, they're not buying anything. What they're doing is they're saying, hey, we'll give you the right for X number of door connections at a reduced impact fee. But in exchange for that, we get 30% of the doors are in regulated land trust. The reality is we're going to end up with like a, a community land land group at some point we're going to hire an ed it sounds like there's going to be a nonprofit that regulates the secondary executive, executive director, director. Oh. that that regulates the the city that can run it, it needs to be someone who's not to, in the city yeah right. it needs to be like an independent full-time I, I will say the 
the yeah. creativity of the land trust and big sky was super interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, that story. So they've gone from, they've gone from 30 homes in a secondary market to almost 800 what, what, in how does, three years. How does that work? So the way they, the way they did it, that was really creative is they, they started with the traditional sort of HRDC model, which mm-hmm. is we bought land and bought and built condos and they have a land trust up there. But what their board realized is we actually really don't care. The, the city built? The big built, built. HRDC and the community. It's not a city. It's a community yeah. township right. of no, Big Portland. Sky. Right. Or big Sky built those birdhouses up there that look like. And they're really nice. And it's like 50. And they're secondary land trust homes. or everything that you want to do with a land trust. They're great. The problem that the board faced was it takes an enormous amount of money and time to sort of like get new projects built and we're not developers. So what they realized is what we really care about is control. We wanna control rentals and we wanna control first time homes that are available to purchase. And so what they did, I thought on the development side, which was really slick, and I don't know what the analogy here is, but in Big Sky, access to sewer and water is everything. Mm-hmm. because it's very limited up there and the land is you know a million dollars an acre right a million and a half an acre so when they they have their they have the resort tax and excuse me for the long story but they have the resort tax up there and the resort tax can't be used for housing subsidies underneath the state you just can't they're not allowed to use that money for that is that a state law state mm-hmm. law so what they did what they did what they got very creative what they did is they went to the community the land trust did and they said what we're going to do is we're going to support the expansion of the sewer and water plant and i know everybody wants housing but what we're going to do is the city handed over the connection rights for the sewer and water to the land trust so every time a developer goes to build in the township of big sky there's there's not enough connectivity rights per acre when you purchase they have to go to the land trust to get those and what she does is she says great i'm going to trade you for 25 percent of your rentals or 30 percent of your rentals we get to place the people who live there now you still make the money you still set the rent but we get to decide who lives there so it's a, it's a really creative idea they took essentially a free asset that was undervalued and they handed it into a nonprofit to create a secondary market. It's really interesting too because that got them around inclusionary the zoning. Free too, which is illegal. Which is, is illegal. connection to the city water and sewer. You still have to pay your impact that's fees. Like, you still have to pay your impact fees. No, I mean that's like the most critical thing in Montana. Yeah. To build houses. And they went and gave it to a nonprofit in exchange for the nonprofit supporting to have control over making sure that it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Housing for working people. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So, well, and they the require it in order to get more. So, their, city couldn't do that. So, so, so they don't. The city to do that. So they don't own land. They just they just put a in essence put a it's deed it's deed restricted, restricted housing. Yeah, right. They own the deed restrictions, and so they've used do that. They own them, or are they just they, they hold the deed restriction. So if if Tom and I built a ten plex in Big Sky, they wanted two of those units to be. For locals, they would be a deed restriction on two of the units for the replacement of the renter associated with that nonprofit. Well, and then it mixes up market rate mm-hmm. and affordable housing. So when you're driving by, you, it's well, not like a so, so, segregated neighborhood or whatever. Well, so Big Sky is interesting because yeah. for them, affordable isn't a problem, it's available. Right. Right. So they, it isn't that. It, you know, she's like, look, I mean, if you're a waiter here, you're making 80,000 a year. So like getting it's the problem is you literally can't find anything. So what we're doing is we're trying to create availability. Most of the time they're actually still at market rate. So, but that's a different, that's a, that's a weird ecosystem. And big Sky is going to have different economics. Than we got. Totally, totally. Yeah. But, yeah. but the concept of sort of like, you know, either you can, use regulations or you can use money right mm-hmm. to sort of create that or you spot. could leverage land if you had it or you could yeah. leverage land I mean, yeah. that's I mean, a great idea too yeah yeah, just, well, like, yeah let's say the city had land and i mean like, like, the city does have land but just why i mean you 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 look at the sort of 
entities that could consider this. Mm -hmm. And you think of three, the, the hospital, the school district, and the, and the city. Mm -hmm. One, every nonprofit in town. And I mean- But there's like, there's other big employers mm -hmm. like PFL, you know, it's like a pretty big employer in town that are doing creative things for housing. So, you well, know, I mean, the big three, but there's other big employers. Sage too. Lodge bought a bunch of those condos behind right. here. Chico Stum. And, yeah, they, Chico and they, and they're, I mean, if, you, if you've got money, that's a good way. I mean, you're just parking money in some condos and putting your thing there, it which is not like a bad, not it a bad. sounds like there's challenges to it though, some unintended, there, unexpected there's, challenges. Yeah, I mean, there's always there challenges always when you're, yeah. Particularly like if you're, if your housing is tied up with your work and either you're not being taken care of by your, by the person that you're working for, you know, there's issues on both sides that you know yeah but that is mind. that's just the, the market has to make that yeah. decision you yeah. have to decide if you want to keep working for that yeah and, and yeah. And then, yeah you can always quit you can always quit you can but always it's something quit. as a city that we should think about because do we want staff do well, we want that do we want you know what i'm saying well who manages those units for yes yeah, so that and that like company store yeah that's the problem but you, can you guys have to realize that well, it has a long history of corporate towns like right. actually went pretty oh, lived in one. that yeah. some went really well some went really poorly you right. have to have a benevolent dictator for it to work well right but <laughs> but, another, but another thing that you can do within that space too is maybe it's not it's tied to a specific employer let's just say i'm working for wyeth and if i'm going to stay in this housing i have to work for wyeth maybe it's more like i have to work in the city you know because if we have a bunch of people who have helped put together right. some of this affordable yeah. housing if I'm working in the city of Livingston, as long as I have a job, I can stay in this house. But if I quit my job and I don't want to work anymore, or, or I go, or go, or I work. Men, yeah. then so, I don't know. So if you're work. if you're a private business owner, right? And let's say I wanted to, I wanted to have 10 rental units mm -hmm. for my employees available. The good news about buying 10 rental units is now I have an asset on my balance sheet that's appreciating. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm writing off enormous amounts of expenses associated with it before my tax ledger. So there's an incredible amount of incentives to actually own the property. Now, let's say you're not gonna own it. Let's say you're not, you don't have the balance sheet to buy. Mm -hmm. So now you're gonna rent, right? Okay. Now, if if you're if you're gonna pay rent, right now the idea is that there would be like a revolving loan trust that people would pay into and that would get you a, a, the option to put your employee into it. Problem is it's a waiting list mm -hmm. and you don't have any priority, but you're still paying your money, yeah. right? Now the advantage is that becomes a tax-free donation. The problem with rental income, paying for somebody's rental unit is technically that has to be reported as income to the individual. So now you're increasing their tax burden. So there's, there's a trade-off. Wait a minute, okay, if you, if I pay for your house rental price, oh, okay, okay. I have to okay. I have to report that as income. No, okay. no. to you. Income yeah. to you. Well, sure, so but it's still discount. You know, you're not paying the full rate. You right. Know? That's if I'm paying a third party. Now, if I just own it, I don't have to report but, anything. But it's still right. Right. Because I can rent it to you for zero. I just want to bring us back. Yeah. So this is awesome conversation for so but should we then remove the implement the housing action plan and put in I th examples I, of the secondary housing market because you've named a few things and so what i'm thinking like when this gets to the commission um do we want to give more directed guidance to the commission is like this is where you should start because we know that this is like a buffet and they're all very big plates or you know what i mean like each thing is like a huge lift so do we want to give more direction to the commission on what we think would be the next and, and also or, we should probably and that was a question I don't know what there's uh, i mean there's going to be two categories of this. there's still things that you can do with regulation like what do you do about short-term rentals yeah. right well should we do the secondary i mean that would that, that would be, that would be about, and then get to secondary rentals well I don't know. I don't. I don't totally know. If I, I don't totally know if I know what the answer is completely. What's the right answer for this community yet? Right, right. That's the problem. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's there. That was helpful. Yeah, that was helpful. I, I think. I think if I was elected as a city commissioner tomorrow, what I would be looking to do is I would want to try to encourage and create an environment that is that is 
having private people create secondary housing options. I don't think I don't think the city is in the wherewithal. The HRDC, frankly, in my opinion, is barely in the wherewithal to be building anything, and 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 they're the most experienced at it. But if you ask around to contractors and suppliers who've done HRDC products, most of them only do one and they never go back again. So I think you still you still need private developers to to do it. But I think the city needs to be no, I, I think that's really, really, really active in saying, you know what, we are not interested in just sort of large amounts of sort of for market single family homes. Right. We're just not really interested in that. But we're, what we want to see come out is we want to see how are you addressing creating a dynamic community in the way that you do your development? People are going to develop higher end stuff all by themselves. Yeah. Don't you don't have to even touch You don't need to touch that. You need to touch the things that either create that or regulate that or, you know, you've got things like short-term rentals, which are yeah. private. Yeah, it's a private, that's a completely private thing, which you may want to regulate. Right, and we need to figure that out, right? We yeah. need to get all the data around there's that, a lot of people what that done, might look there's like. There's a lot of people that have done yeah. it. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, what you're talking about is trying to leverage private development to create some of to create some of that stuff and to keep it that way. So if, if, if Tom and I went into business today and we said, you know, architect and builder, we're going to build some low-income housing, it's all going to be about how do we get the cost of the door down. And the cost of the door comes in from land. It comes into how much I can put on each square inch of land. It comes into the cost of the utilities, the connectivity, the amount of time and effort I have to deal with the municipality to get through it, and the certainty of getting through that process, and then finally the cost of the actual construction. Well, and and so if you if you go down that list, yeah, I mean right now, I mean the zoning code really really helps you. It, it's it's great right now. In yeah, fact, no, there's it, very little adjustment needed. Maybe some yeah. realignment. So, so, so that sort of took a bunch of the, of that tick list off the table. It did. I, I the mean, parking changes, the yeah. density changes. No, what, what, what you're talking about is is how do you, if somebody builds something, how do you keep it that way? Right, because you you, you can sell it the first time, right, affordably. But if it's not in then, a then trust next, or then, then, then next year it becomes a VRBO yeah. and it gets up, yeah. takes, so it takes it off the yeah. table. But that's why you need so to trust. So Manny did a bunch of this out east beforehand. And the way it would work with the city is you would go in and the city would say, you know, at your zoned R2, for instance, and you can do this amount of density. And they would go in for their site planning review. And the city would say to them, okay, we will give you 20% more density. Now we're talking about larger developments. This is outside yeah. like New Jersey, right? We'll give you 20% more density. If all 20% of that is uh, deed restricted, affordable housing, and if it's mixed in with the current building that you're is doing. That in, is uh, that in inclusionary zoning though? Or are we allowed, is that- so you, No, Look. so you're not using, you're not, you're not necessarily using, I don't know how they always do it. I don't know the legal record way it is, but that's that entitlement negotiation mm -hmm. The ability to negotiate for entitlements well, as a developer with a municipality. Could you, could you do this? And I don't. Is I don't that know. in the plan? Is that in the housing action plan? That idea? No. Hold on. No. It, it, well, it, what you what you're that. talking about is a density bump. Yeah. Yeah. And or or sometimes it would come in terms of like you you can shrink your streets a little, or you don't have to do sidewalks in this development, or. But it's an exemptions to the current statute in exchange for, right? In exchange for uh, off market housing. I don't know how those work. Well, let's that just let's just good. let's just say this. I mean, you've got a couple of zones. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of that thing that Dan calls doing up on the mm -hmm. yeah, and he's asking for R three, and probably going to get it. Well, I think he did get it. He, he got first approval. Yeah, yeah but I think we see it again. chances are pretty good. Yeah. And but you know that's just sort of R three with no strings attached. Yeah, you know? um, which is actually pretty generous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, R three is is a lot more dense than R two. It's very generous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and, yeah. and, and mixed use is even more so. I think maybe a little too much more so, but that's my personal opinion. Um, but uh, people are asking for this sort of stuff. You know, there's a there's something that's coming up. I think I've, I've read the re, read the agenda. There's a there's a a piece behind behind Matt's meat market that's a, that's asking for for mixed use. They asked for highway. They commercial. asked for highway commercial. commercial. We gave them mixed use. Yeah, which both are fine. You can do anything in either well, one. Mixed use is better because you can there's do a anything. little bit. There's more um, restrictions on mixed use. There's more restrictions. You can't you can't use. put like a highway Hotel. commercial. So you can put like a factory back. A yeah. Hooters and a Hooters hotel. Yeah, and you can even. You I can, think the difference with hotels. Yeah, hotels mm -hmm. and drive yeah. drive through restaurants can't be mixed use, but they can be in highway commercial. Thank you for remembering that. Anyway, um, like, you know, Hooters and Hooters hotel. hotel. We talk about so much. Meetings. You can have the restaurant. But, you but, can't have but if somebody asks you that, could right. you negotiate Why? something? Just a big difference. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can now. I don't. I mean, I, I think that's a pretty good question. I mean, that's it that's your, the question. I'm sorry. Tom. No, if if somebody if somebody's asking for an increased density, could you put some strings on it? You know, say. That's, yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what state law. That's what I was just looking. No, at. I don't know what no. state law allows. That no, I mean that because people are doing that. It yeah, would and be, Tom, that's like some of this comes down to our form of government. So, for, and so I wonder, true. like, what does the state allow us to do under general powers versus if we were a charter? And that would be something that we'd have to ask staff to help us research. Is that topic? I wonder if it depends on the direction of flow for the information on that if the client or the, if the owner of the property is requesting one well, thing the city could put a string on it as if it's the city as saying as you as have as to do as this as the as state as is so with land use law right. like density bonus know. is on the list of tools density and, bonus okay and well, the housing action plan I'm, I'm starting to sort of in my simplistic way sort of getting some regular things that Let's just say strings that don't cost the city any money. Right, but the right. city has it's the like power to do, which yeah, is well, what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, it's it's yeah. like non non fund like things. like a like a higher uh, connection rate sheet and a secondary rate sheet based upon affordable deed restrictions. I think that was and how much is that worth? Mm -hmm. And how much is that worth? And then in town, maybe not that. We much. talked about impact fees. Is that on the list in the housing action plan? We talked about that when we, I think that was right before you were on the commission, wasn't it? So yeah. we did the impact, we adjusted our well, impact and, fees, and then we talked about using that, at least I had talked that, about that with Michael and I'm sure we talked to other commissioners about yeah, adjusting or reducing mm -hmm. impact fees. I mean, you could have so a housing, you could like impose a housing impact fee. For the, in like density bonus in the housing action yeah, plan, that's yeah. specifically for the and city. And it would go away if you were doing a 40% deed restricted or something like that. Areas well, of you, you have to have a deed. We should take turns talking because yeah. we're being recorded yeah. too, and it's really hard. I just remembered when you're yeah. um, But I will just say in the in the housing action plan under density bonus, it says specifically for the city of Livingston, areas of town have been identified through the Livingston Growth Policy as recommended for infill development. Creating a density bonus could incentivize the creation of more affordable housing. But you guys already really did that. Yeah. So bonus. you already went through and created the density. City increases in the zone. Well, what I'm what I'm actually really talking about yeah, is this so moment. Yeah, we didn't adjust impact fees. But there's this like if you think about it in terms of the process, there's this moment where you go to the planning office, and you're going through the subdivision planning process, and then you're going through a site review planning process. Mm -hmm. Right now, the way that works is there's a set of regulations, and the question is, are you complying with that regulation or not? Yeah. Right. And then you go through for approval or not based upon are you complying with that regulation. What there isn't is there's no negotiation tools for the city to get a higher, better outcome to their desired goals. And I don't totally, I'm, I'm just going to say, I don't know all the rules and regulations. What I do know, what I do know is like um, impact fees, density rights, parking allotment changes, uh, quantity of roads, stop signs, those sorts of things, they make a difference. I mean, they like, mm -hmm. they start to add up. Mm -hmm. It might be 10 or 15 or 20% of your cost per door is directly related to that process. And mm, that's so well, no, we, but if you think about the infrastructure deltas, right? Like think about parking changes, right? If you went to half a spot versus a full spot per unit, 
They've that already could, cut them in half. That, could, but 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 <laughs> but if you cut them in half again, because now I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do forty percent affordable to restricted housing. That, yeah. that, then all of a sudden you you're developing some parking problems. But if you do the same thing that James was bringing up at the last meeting, you have awesome public transportation. Yeah. At the same time, some people won't care. I think we're getting people in town that don't have as many cars. How do you take what we're saying and talking about and put it into words, or do you we already have a couple? I don't know. I I do think we probably need a probably a little more conversation. I mean, it's, it's this is discussion. I think, we, I think we need, to, we, we also need a little, okay. little, let's, let's just, why don't we, why don't we do, why don't we? Well, and I want me to flag one other thing for us too, is that the governor has created a new housing working group and they're looking at lots of things. We're all, we're going into a legislative session this year and I would not be surprised if we see a whole lot of changes around land use planning and some of these regulations coming out, changing throughout the legislative session. I think we have to be prepared for that. Are, we, are, are you going to those meetings? I am not, I should be. I really yeah. need to go back and start watching them. We have staff going to meet, but um, those meetings, because we track this too for my day job. But I think that is one thing that we should probably have on here is we should be tracking what the state is doing because they've done things before that have made it harder in Livingston and taken away tools that we were going to use to address yeah. housing. So if we as a city are not paying attention to what they're doing in Helena, we will be in trouble. Yeah. Especially because we're a mid-sized town that is general powers form of government. So we um we are the community that is not often considered. It's the big cities and it's the super rural. Mm -hmm. And it's places like here where we don't have an option tax. We don't have massive tax income like Bozeman or something. And we don't have um, the influence that more rural counties bring to the legislature with some of these state laws. So I think if, when we're thinking about housing, if we're not paying attention to legislative action, yeah. We nothing else on this list matters. <laughs> like that's just my personal because they've done it before. And yeah, we will get and if and I think that we should be probably pushing our commission to take a stance on the things that are important well, and are on the chopping I, block because we have to vote yeah, on them. Yeah. If we don't vote on them as a commission, we can't send somebody from our city to go lobby and yeah. say, hey. But thinking about goals, you know, just what these mm -hmm. statements are. And if you broke broke it out into say those three categories, say three yeah. categories, mm -hmm. yeah, right. which would be regulation, yeah, mm -hmm. what could we do regulate, you know, and what should we be thinking about in regulation? Then call it incentives, or what? What would you that that middle, you know, just I, I would say incentives, mm -hmm. and then and, and then, then finally yeah. sort of direct action. Yeah, I think those. I are mean, three. you could. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of that that proposal that Carlos did on the on the Northwest Energy problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's a that's that's direct action. You you find some way to buy that, right? Or you, you right take now. a bunch of city land, you open up, and you say, "We're going to go through a process to accept proposals." Right. And that's the most staff heavy too, right? So it's good to have a balance because we can't do all staff heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, like, do, you don't do it all at once, but I know, but I mean, like realistically, knowing what our capacity is, like as a city, that's the number one perspective about commissioners. I would say, when you know, like the yeah, we hear a lot that we don't but, have but, to do it. But but I think some of it is pushback's not the right word. Yeah, yeah, but no, we just, we just hear that we're we're we don't have the capacity, right? And I mean, I think we. Yes. Well, especially yeah. now. Yeah. Right, because we're down a planner and yeah. a city manager. Yeah. yeah. But I also yeah. think that some of this stuff can be stuff that the city is just and I guess, supporting yeah. more than doing. I, mm -hmm. I, it's interesting when we've been looking at these like these maps. There's a couple here and there's a couple over there. It's interesting mm -hmm. to see how this process was so much different than the world we live in now. Mm -hmm. Like like they literally were just like, oh, we're doing the Minnesota ad, and it's like here, it's a square mile, yeah. and it's a block, and it's gridded, and it's like these are now available for sale. It's such an interesting like come well, get them, come get them. It's such <laughs> an interesting different. The the the, the, the point I'm, I'm trying to make is like the we're it it feels very much to me sometimes like we're 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 reacting. We're we're always in a situation to have to react. Yeah, let's not. And we're not really saying 
I don't know where I'm trying to go with this. What I'm trying to say, he's talked about incentives. Like, again, I would be trying to create a, a market incentive that did a couple of things. And one of them was we want really, we want more density downtown and then around it. And then two, if we are doing new developments, we always want a certain portion of that to be included in the secondary market somehow. And then I would, I would try to align my incentives. I would go to our housing action committee and mm -hmm. say, we're open to what, how do we, how do we get people, well, how do we, what are the, what are the, the ways that we incentivize people to, to create secondary well, market and, housing? And, and what kind of direct things could you do? I mean, yeah. you know, could you, could you, you know, look at all the city land and, and see, are there opportunities there? There probably are. Mm -hmm. And and so that would be sort of a direct act. I mean, you don't have to do any or all of these things, but they should, right. all, should all be on the table. Mm -hmm. And 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 the, the incentives are are probably the biggest because there's so many of them. There's so many ways you can do that. Whereas the other ones are sort of more opportunistic, and that regulation is regulation. And, and I think there's but for the housing problem, like we always kind of get attached to sort of the traditional HUD definition of right. affordable. Mm -hmm. That's, there's a, there's a, there's a big market above that that still has a huge mm -hmm. problem. And so, yeah, I agree. you know, if you look at like right now, if you could have a two bedroom rental available for $1,400 a month for a two bedroom rental, those would be people would yeah. love them. Right. Yeah. That's, that is above. If we had apartments, people would love them. Affordable is, affordable is at the, it would be hard, eight to 900. But it would be hard yeah. to build that at that level. But it's housing diversity too, which we haven't talked about. It would be, either. it would be hard. It would be hard without, without, without either shifting the land, the mm -hmm. building costs or the regulatory costs. I mean, at that, I'm just talking about those numbers. You know, you, you're, yeah, we, we, we back in the napkin this a lot and it, it, it's difficult to get there. But I think also like, at that, any cost, people want to live in apartments also, and that's what Livingston does not have. I remember, and this was like years ago when I was campaigning, um, the amount of people that really want to downsize and have not a big house and a yard to take care of, but totally. they just, they still want to live in Livingston. You know, they don't want to move out of town, but they just want something smaller. We don't have that housing stock at any cost. We like just don't have And that could be apartments. either ownership or... Yeah. Those could be those could be condos. Yeah, right. I mean, I could there's only, a few yeah. of those, but not many. Not but, many, and, and the ones that we have, right? It's not like they're. But to, Tom, like they're to Tom's available. point, you have to get the cost has to be to get to that twelve right. to fifteen hundred. It's about one hundred eighty five dollars a square foot, which is like really hard to get to, depending on land costs. Depending on land costs and all sorts other costs, mm -hmm. because you know that land that they're asking for that. Highway commercial zoning for mm -hmm. the last contract was for 420 an acre. So I mean that's crazy. We're talking a lot about affordable, but are we talking about housing diversity and well, what are we doing to diversify housing? I think the the incentives and I think looking at that secondary market, we're not look we're not just talking about within that like capital A affordable. We're talking about a, a okay. mix of use because we have like we have tons of people in that 80 to 120 percent AMI that can't find a place to live, you know. So it's like we do need that diversity. It's not just we don't just need you have need at all levels. Yes, yes. across the whole lab. Except for rich, yeah. we're good there. Except for really rich. <laughs> we don't have we don't have to worry about the rich. They'll solve it. They'll solve it themselves. I mean, they have the money to do that, right? Or they'll come in. And I mean, if I could, but if I could do what we're doing, what they're doing in Bozeman, and build apartments for. Four hundred dollars a square foot and sell them for a thousand. I don't really. Sure. I don't need any help. Drives you crazy. I got it. I can do that fine on my own. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and they can buy a lot in town. They can buy a house in town and knock it down and do whatever they wanted. You know? Yeah, or they uh, can go out to the valley. There's a lot. There is a lot. Are you talking about the super rich now? Um, mm -hmm. Not yeah. the super, just the rich. the rich. Just the rich, but the, the ultra wealthy is a totally different mm -hmm. deal. Is the rich. other aspect of this is the city needs to get revenue. No. Right. as assessed from the taxes yeah we can't build everything at a lower rate than where we're at now for what revenue we're receiving per resident mm -hmm. because that's going backwards we're getting less money to support more people we need a supply of all of it across right. the whole I mean, building yeah we, we totally need that whole supply across the, the whole spectrum but i think 
if we don't need to help those builders do that, I think that's happening. It's no, I think we shouldn't. We should should yeah. shouldn't yeah. say yeah. no. Don't we don't yeah. want it? No, no, no. We should just not make it. Right. You, might, yeah. might, exactly. you, might, yeah. you might be able to. You might be able though to uh, impose some kind of user fee or tax on it. You know, if somebody wants to build a big haunted house. You know, you're you're not building. It'll cost a whole bunch more. Their just updating the, the the plan fee. I mean, making there's all kinds of fees that need to be updated. It's incredibly cheap to build in Livingston. It's, yes, it it's painfully cheap to build in Livingston. Absolutely as it right. Is. Absolutely right. So and, and your impact, even modernizing your permitting permit. fees are really cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the impact fees are a little high, but the permitting is not cheap. Permitting is like free. You're welcome and for the impact fees. Put the coin on the table. Yeah, well, the Let's make them high. They can always come down. <laughs> well, I, I, I would say this is one of the most user friendly to, places I've ever worked. To try to get yeah, Mr. LA. Of the places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. So, of the places that I looked at, just to, because I did get into revenue for a minute yeah. while I was having my brain think on this. Um, Livingston, I have to say, is the lowest revenue received per resident of all the cities I looked at. And we do an amazing job with what we have. What tells me that we're spending our money incredibly efficiently. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's a very, yeah. very good thing. The other cities I looked at, uh, you know, they're not that much more. Sun Valley, everybody knows is expensive. It's all full of extremely wealthy people. Yeah. They, they only have a, a few hundred dollars more per resident as far as taxes collected. In Sun Valley? In Sun Valley than we do. Wow. The city of, uh, of Kalispell has what, three times, uh, just about three times our uh, population, same with Mercer Island. I did the two of them together because they are similar to us, bigger. They're only four, I mean, they're four times the, the, the Populate, or excuse me, the revenue that we got. Three times the population, four times the revenue. When you say revenue, we're not that far. What are the components of that? That's just the reported gross revenue of the city per year for okay. 2022, I want to say. So that would include everything from taxes to impact fees, everything. Whatever's on their balance sheet is their reported right. revenue. Parking tickets. You, yeah. you, know what, you know what? I, would... I can't imagine that that's a significant <laughs> part of the income. The, the, uh, <laughs> I don't the, know. I bet there's people living so there's some people, there's, there's, some, there's some people downtown that would disagree. Oh, like <laughs> Triple one, one thing too that the, the city can do outside of its its direct uh, incentives and action and regulation is that it can it can create an opportunity for the conversation to become mm -hmm. more serious. Like what I was thinking is maybe maybe if the goal is to create a vibrant secondary housing market that enables affordable and reasonable housing, that the first step would be put a another ad hoc committee together to develop that policy recommendation. And, and there's a lot of people who are very well educated in the subject in town now because of what's happened through the housing action plan. Oh, and it could be a really interesting place to start. I think there's a lot of little things and I think there's a lot of big things. Um, you look at the polling that's been run and housing is right at the top of the list. Every yeah. time. Our, our, our people are- And so maybe, maybe the city could, could, the first step would be to formalize that conversation a little bit more around a direct policy discussion. That sounds great. Um, I think that would be that would be an interesting conversation. It's a I think that it it's, makes, a it's a complicated subject. Yeah. It is complicated. And that's why I think too, like getting more and more community engagement, like the, the results we're seeing from increased community engagement is not match the lift, right? Like, so it is work to have community engagement, but that outcome is so much greater than it would be if it was just the commission doing everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it's a good idea to figure out how to keep I do the momentum that started with the growth policy into the housing. The other thing that the housing, the current housing action group could do for the city right off the bat with HRDC's help is actually actually do a needs assessment. It hasn't really been done. They did the they did the affordable like section eight need mm -hmm. in the housing action plan, but Which they is the most in need people right. But they didn't do so. Like if you look at uh, I could probably bring it up, yeah. but if you look at Big Skies, mm -hmm. um, 
their land trust group, they actually have like a whole like spectrum of, of income from like, you know, deep affordable to ultra wealthy. And then they have the full market need assessed throughout that entire spectrum. How'd they get that info? They, uh, they did an economic study. They, that's what HRDC does. That's part of their whole thing and that HRDC does. You like, oh, you, you really need... 400 units between 80,000 to 120,000 income. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm going through the hot. I, I, I could. I could. That seems really useful. Like, because then we know where to like, where we know. Then we would know where to direct our and limited what, resources, right? Yeah. And and it is one of the one of the well and some of those things are really hard to do and some are easier. Well, and the and one of the reasons why I thought it, why, it, why it would be helpful is so for me, um, these guys. I just met with these guys last week. These guys are Hilltop Securities Group, and I met with these guys last week. They were up here again. They're super interested in funding uh, uh, like a, a mixed level income development and they're, they're a private bond placement group. The very first thing they need to have any kind of conversations with us is an economic needs assessment. So like I'm, I'm about to go fund one probably to, to well, do it. And it's not terribly expensive. How, how big a project are they looking at? They want to. They want to do between. They want to do three phases. Where's their sweet spot? They want to do three phases at thirty million dollars a tranche, so up to one hundred and twenty million total. Investment. How many houses is that? It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like, like the how much is it's until the yes here, here okay. no it, hundreds. It's it's like so each phase is like that's a big project. One to three hundred yeah. houses. Or yeah. Something? Would we be doing the how? <laughs> <laughs> they, so these guys these guys have money right they have money that's looking for a home there's a lot of interest in the rocky front and there's a lot of interest in this area because of what but they're looking lone for mountains them. doing they yeah. want to build in your etj no no not necessarily they they don't care what it is they're not they're not the developers they're the money okay but they, but they, but they want their money why, that's why i asked that they question. want they want like guys like us to say, here's how you should spend your money. Here's where you can spend your money. But it's actually our money because it becomes a loan and we have to pay it back. So it's a bond. Now, one thing that's really interesting about these guys is their whole, like most of their business is municipal and hospital financing. So they're doing, they're in Arizona in this town, they're doing 120 units between the city and the hospital. And it's all municipal bond funded development. And it's housing units? It's housing units. Mm -hmm. Deed restricted affordable housing units. Yeah. So can you put that on the list, the thing that we need to do so that we can open up the door to more relationships? Well, those, those are kind of a so, direct action. Right? No, I'm talking about the economic study. Yeah. So, oh, the economic study. So why? So the housing needs assessment that, that, the, that the, the housing committee did is not, not enough. We no, need you want to see, you want to see what it does. It's, 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 it's the table of content. Mm -hmm. No, so we need the economics that we need to know what people are like, what are the actual units that need to be built here and how many. And, and, and that's even a snapshot in time. I mean, it's going to be very different now than it was even five years ago. It's going to be different than it was three years ago. How much do those costs suggest for the $20,000? Uh, they're not a lot. Let me see if I can find it. You just threw around hundreds of millions of dollars as an example, so I don't know what your definition of a lot is. Uh, yeah. a lot, th thousands it to free. It could be a lot. Thousands to free. Yeah, HRDC, to free. Okay. HRDC has money for this stuff. Oh, cool. So um, That sounds interesting. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it would be crazy hard to do. Maybe she sent it to Matt or email. And, and that's what struck me about that housing needs analysis. It wasn't a needs analysis. It was, uh, you could do that, so you could do that. Interesting. So here's. Oh, there we go. The regional investments right here. So this is what they did for Bozeman. This is HRBCs. And what it does is it breaks down all the current available. Ability, and you can see the income range. Mm -hmm. Availability right? or need? This is availability, and then they do need below. Those are, and so, uh, so, you, so you have, 
do you see, do, do they tell you what that income and so, range is? So total, yeah, they're they're broken down. Less, but, less but than thirty percent of what of the. Hold on, just a second. Hold on. So total, I can email this to you, but total, so if you add those two numbers up that I've highlighted, that's the total units needed in the community. It's almost 5,000 that, oh, that yeah. Gallatin yeah. County needs between rentals and ownership. And it's broken down by need level. And this, that's to satisfy that need, not current state. And then they apply a growth factor to it and they can that, forecast. Does, so does, is, that, does that include, okay, 150 yeah, so, so you've got the high end in there. Yeah, it's everything. And then what they do is they then create this little pie chart over here that looks really bad because it's super low resolution. Mm -hmm. But you can see, so it's like also not the best. Sorry, part. James, I'm not trying to. Right. And then they, they, they break that down and then they've got these amounts. So, and then you can see what I also really love about this is you can see what those income brackets are. And, and the housing mm -hmm. action report has to be just like this, mm -hmm. it's just missing. That part. So their estimate, HRDC's estimate, is that we are 780 dwelling units short in Park County. And that's that's at a, a spectrum of different income levels. And that's in the whole county. But you, but you, what you really want to know is how is how many how many are down in the red zone. You should you should look at it from the county's perspective though, which is how they did here, because those houses are going someplace, right? So they're and if so we can both if we can but if we can both. put them in the because you wouldn't just look at the we're, city we're something the whole county has so we can see and then we can try to like say this is what we should be at forever mm -hmm. we're gonna take we're gonna take these three we're gonna worry about this you don't you don't worry about the green zone you know, ever <laughs> property in the county is lost as far as as far as the city goes that makes sense thank you yeah we don't make it well and and Melissa too like James and I was. And Tracy's like, oh, I should just do this. We just didn't do this all the way. So it could just be a- And Tracy is with HRDC. Yeah, HRDC she runs HRDC. HRDC. Well, James and I had just said too, you know, that we can look at it. You look at that with as a county, but you think like the more of that you can, those homes you can right. put in the city that stops sprawl, right? Right, that's what was- And then also, as James pointed out, then we are getting the income from well, that we're getting you would, right. you, you wouldn't be building this place if you didn't have utilities, if you, if you, mm -hmm. you know, you can't build it out in the valley. The it, green people. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> the green people. Well, they were going to put 180 houses, I think, was the original plan on the backside of the wine glass. I remember that. I was out there for that. And they were the whole At part what of point. Acre, what acre? I mean, it was just, like, what size was the lot? One to five. Yeah. And now are they going to? And it was the it was the main gonna, reserve. If you want to Google it, were they were they gonna were they gonna put were they gonna run off septic tanks? Or were they gonna have no? Some, they were gonna do a treatment plant down in the flats down underneath okay. where the larger house is at the end of Holes Creek. So that's that's where the rubber hits the road. So so yep. the so the trade off there for developers, my land cost goes to like eight thousand an acre to six versus say like up to 400 in the city, right. but then I have to deal with treatment water issues, mm -hmm. right? So that's the, so, yeah. that's the trade-off. Now, if we don't want someone to go do that, then, then what we would do is we would, we can't control land. Value. Well, you have, you have, you, you have a bunch of those costs already covered. That's, that's right. Right. And, and we try to make that more enticing exactly. than going to buy a whole bunch of acreages and doing it at three to fives. And in Montana, the, in Montana, you you butt up against water rights limits how small you can go outside of a city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it ultimately comes down to those kinds of utilities. I mean, we, we did a little thumbnail and had uh, what's the cost per acre of a twenty acre lot versus a hundred acre lot versus a five, mm -hmm. and the difference isn't all that much. But but when you start to add development costs in there, it, so. It, the bottom line, which is kind of counterintuitive, is, is out in the valley or in rural areas. It's really not as it, it's, it's really not as economic to subdivide as you would think it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it depends on what part of that spectrum you're at. If you're if you're the guy doing the infrastructure and land subdivision, there's a ton of money to be made. If you are the person building know. building the oh, I think you can three x money. The person building the home. The person building the home, it it it, it you're not going to get a cheaper house. 
you're going to get a more expensive home at the end of it. But if you're the guy doing the land development, there's a lot of money to be made there, which is why there's so much pressure on that kind of development. Yeah, you just pounded stakes and then collecting in rows. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're scraping dirt, you're pounding stakes, and then you're selling off the rest of it. You, you did yeah, your the outlays. If you look nothing. at what things you're selling for, I'm not sure it's up. So it's 10 o'clock. I'm just yeah. doing a time check. Thank you. Where else is on our We've been doing it for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think this. <laughs> well, we have to hand through this and then some other bits. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and those kinds of issues are county issues anyway. Yeah. Can you make sure that it's like um, when you say group that we put it's an ad hoc community yeah. group again? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. This is all needs lots of work, but yeah. Um, number and, and I still think number two needs more. You just can't. That's just too broad a category. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Well, then maybe we take this number one. I don't know if we need to put number one yeah. in or not. Yeah, yeah. Pulling stuff out. Well, I don't know what you would implement. That, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Fine. So yeah. I think that can just go. I mean, that was, was a good. Start. That was a good start. That was a If you point, right, right, yeah. Yeah. if you contrast that with the way that we spock did land, adjust current regulations to implement the growth policy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so that plan. Um, that's very specific. I don't know how you would do that in the housing action. Well, well, well that, 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 I mean, that thing is just really complex. I mean, it's easy to, if you have the growth policy, which is complex, and you just say implement it, but it's simple, you can put it out. Whereas, I mean, this is kind of how I'm thinking. Oh, got you. So that's the overarching, yeah. and then that's how we get there, kind of. Yeah, because I think want, the, the goal, right? The goal that we're saying with housing is we want a secondary housing market, right? Is that what we're saying? Like that's the outcome five years from now. A second, among other things, you know, you'd Give like me another one. You, you, that isn't a secondary what do you mean by a secondary market so anything you want a rental market and part of that secondary what you're what you're saying is is that in new development a certain percentage of that is is affordable housing that's that's what you mean by a secondary market i think i think what i'm what i'm saying is is i think if you create the incentives maybe i'm wrong but if you create the incentives to manage like the bottom third of the housing need to half, the rest of it oh, sure. can kind of sort itself out. So I think the way you do that, no, no, wait, wait, I think the way wait. I think the way you do that in my mind is either you take direct action, you create incentives or you relax relations, with the outcome being that you have units, whether for rent or for ownership, that are not part of the primary market. That's, I think, the end result. Because I think the city doesn't need to help with the primary market. By set, by, no, of course not. Right. But, but I'm just trying to get a mm -hmm. definition on this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, no, I appreciate so, that, Tom, because yeah. I think the next yeah. round of people, if they don't have a wife at the table, they're going to be like, what, what does this mean? And so how do we... Well, I, mean, I, I understand a lot of this. Well, but, or yeah. Tom at the table. Yeah, yeah right. Like but, people that aren't like in that world of language. I mean, what, what, it, what it really is is an assisted housing. In one way or the other, you know. And, I don't know if it's assisted because that implies action by the that implies well, some sort of monetary I, action. I, so let's let's say like look, the big tools are you're doing a land trust, you're no, doing, no, you're, no, or you're doing no, or you're doing or you're doing deep. Go, go, go back go backwards a little bit. I mean, what you're doing is it record a, a market that that is preserving lower yes. affordable affordable housing. That, that's that's and, and, it's, and it's and it's doing and it's doing it through some kind of action. It's yeah. not it's not market driven. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, a second, system. it's a secondary market. It's it is yeah. market. It's still market. So like if you, I just think it's a hard if you have a hard term to understand. If you have, if you know, uh, maybe maybe that is. I, if you have affordable housing, right, still has 
fluctuations in rates between one unit to a unit across the street, even if they're even if they're underneath the AMI rates, right? There's still a market. There's still a market for the value of that house. There's still a market for the rental of that house. It just means that you're not going to go and turn it into a primary market residence. That's it. No, it's 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 somehow restricted. It's somehow restricted. Yeah, it's it is. Can you say restricted rather than secondary? Well, I think I think protected. protected. Housing you put in in secondary. See, second. The reason why I like secondary is because it doesn't have any of the uh, the negative connotations with traditional housing programs that that people have baggage with. And and I just right. think it's hard to understand. Yeah, I don't want to make it. So it doesn't sound like it's a redistribution of wealth where we're going to take. We're helping you with this. We're well, going to why, why, why don't we just say it the way you did two seconds ago, which was like that we're. Um, I can't remember how you just said it. This creating affordable and reasonable housing. He said preserving affordable housing. Yeah, why don't market that preserves housing. lower income housing, lower yeah. affordable. Why don't we say, of, instead of just here, affordable, sure. can we also put that we're talking about? Um, What's how about preserving housing for locals? Yeah, but it also it's like it's like the it's that mid the middle. But you'd it's also like have... that middle and low. It's not just like capital A affordable. It's like working class, middle income people also that we're talking about. How about right? we, how about we just yeah. say reasonable housing? Well, and and I mean in workforce that... housing is another word that's been used like affordable and workforce housing kind of. I mean, it's I it's housing that the that the primary market can't provide economically. I know because I'm looking here and just pulled up like and other terms for, for secondary, secondary market. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 just a way to say that, but I think it probably also needs a little more. You know, there, there's some more things that are in there. I mean, do we want to? I just, I really look at this, why then the first thing I'm thinking is that somebody's going to come and see this and say, create. No, just, I'm going to say, what do we do? No, I'm going to tell you what I'm like playing devil's advocate. Somebody will see this and they say, okay, to have a reasonable priced housing. The first thing we need to do is just allow anything and everything everywhere and say yes to every developer who comes along because our biggest problem is we don't have enough units so if we build enough units it will solve all of our problems i can't tell you how many times i've heard that as a commissioner it isn't an in, it is a thrill it, but it's not an invalid argument so but, it's, but by itself singularly it's it's it's, it's just naive it's just naive it's it's, just, it's, it's not a matter of supply and demand well, that is the a, it, well, well, it can it can it can be solved that way. It it one hundred percent could be one hundred percent. You just would not like the place that we ended up living in right. at the end of it. You 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 people have solved that problem. Go to Salt Lake City. It is just tracked forever. That's right. right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so you you, you you can solve that problem. You just give up. A whole lot of other outcomes by mm -hmm. taking that approach. Well, it is a very it's, naive it's, it's, perspective. I think, we need to, I think we need to clarify this statement then in some way so know, that I, we're not saying that we're opening. But that's, I think that's the point. When, remember when I was arguing about in the land, about like the juxtaposition between sort of like additional annexation and growing of the city yeah. versus housing? That's, that's why I was having that. Because yeah. those are competing priorities, right? Right. So, um, and that's, this is like the thing that I, the words matter to me because I've seen how people take this idea and use it for their own thing that doesn't necessarily- I totally agree. What the community wants. So that's- Could you say- That's where my fear is coming from. <laughs> I mean, what you're, if you look at how this place will really go, it's gonna be sort of a combination of mm -hmm. small scale info, which will just kind of, which is real, which is really kind of enabled by by a lot of design changes and that sort of thing. You're, you're gonna, you know, you can you can build an ADU in your backyard. You can do this. You can do that. If you do that, you'll probably satisfy sort of the upper end of the the upper end of the middle, maybe. You know, you you know, and and uh, but to go to the 
if, if, if you just allow more units to be built, they're not going to be the kind of units you want. Mm -hmm. And that's the fallacy of that argument. Right. That's the fallacy. Right. That's why it's a naive argument, but yeah. it is a valid argument. It's just naive. But it's going to come up again. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, but it does, if, you, if, you, if you define the problem as, as, that's right. as, as providing reasonable priced housing, more housing does not solve that. It does not create. It does not. We just allow people. To the, the, the the problem the 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 undercrush to what Tom's saying, which he's he's right about. And we've had this discussion over whiskey before. Is that <laughs> you have a per cost to build square foot minimum bar that is difficult to climb over. So we're back to if I want to price a rental unit at twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a month, I need to be at a dollar eighty five per square foot, one one hundred eighty five per square foot. The reality is most buildings is between 250 to three and a quarter right now. So it's almost kind of double what well gets to reasonable. So also what it what it'll do. Also, you have a market that will pay a couple thousand dollars a month, not 1250. That's right. So why so if you're a developer, you'll build to that. In thermodynamics, yeah. one of the, in thermodynamics, oh, wow. one of the most important things to do is to is to define your environment and things outside of the environment. They're outside. So if we're looking at just our environment, our market is bigger than just the city of Livingston. If we build yeah. every square inch with a house on in Livingston, we still have a bigger market than just here that will come in and influence. So right. it, it can't just be a pure free market analysis of no, no, build I, more. I, 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 agree. Gonna, I didn't mean I didn't mean to derail. I, we all agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just saying that the reason why that argument <clears> comes up is because it's it, it, very easy to understand and it's very naive the 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 problem is much more complicated and nuanced than just if we just keep building forever what i will say is if you keep building forever long enough and it looks like houston you will hit a point eventually yeah. eventually yes where it will come down in price it will crash well you'll have mm -hmm. shitty you'll, you'll have shitty yeah, it'll, it'll look like crap yeah you know i mean yeah, that's not what we're trying to do I, an awful like, lot an awful, <laughs> an awful lot an awful lot of the low income housing is trickle down not built that's right yeah right and, and you know it's 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 neighborhoods that fail neighborhoods yeah. that just you know and that's that's where most of it comes from so do we need to put any like clarifying words do. on this statement to put sideboards around this idea so that when somebody else that's not one of us picks us up and reads it and says this is the goal okay i can preserve reasonable price housing you know houston here we come or whatever i'd, I'd like you i'd like you to show me the numbers would be my answer back to that how many how many units Gets us to reasonable. What's the total market requirement saturation? And how can you build for that? Now, I don't think it's. I think it's unobtainium. I think your numbers so are like not about for like a billion and a half dollars. You give me a billion dollars, I will build enough houses to get them reasonably priced. But it's like it's like such a huge number. Oh, I guess like so. What I'm yeah, seeing, what, what you know, do you need to do as a commissioner, absurd Yeah, yeah. Give me the number. Show show so this, me. This is what happens as a commissioner since I've been a commissioner. Yeah, we've had subdivisions put in front of us to vote on and the framing for why why we should support it as a commission is basically like when we have issues with the actual subdivision certain things and granted many of our policies ordinances building requirements have been updated since this time but when it came before us as a commission some of the ways that it was presented was you need more housing if you want housing costs to come down carry you just need to say yes to this because this subdivision is what will bring prices down in livingston mm -hmm. and so it's like we have this subdivision it's not what the community wants it doesn't fall in line with any of the community values or goals or the vision and we're being told if you want houses that are affordable you have to vote for this subdivision and the subdivision before us is not the kind of subdivision the community wants and so um good old crap right What's that? I went to I went to elementary school with Brad and Longfellow. <laughs> Discovery Vista. He's the, they're the oh, so there's like a few there's a few things that have come before us that have been like this. So and this is the most common statement that gets. And remember, all commissioners and all future commissioners are not sitting in this room right now. So how do we frame so, this for those commissioners who are not housing experts? Well, so to go back to the New Jersey example, Manny's building mm -hmm. subdivisions. That whole conversation Maybe needs to be from New Jersey. Manny gets, yeah. You you need to you need to. It's not the same guy. 
that conversation needs to happen in the planning and site review process. The planning office should be having that argument with them and telling them, I'm sorry, this is the way the regulations are in place. You're not going to receive an exemption for it. That, that conversation is done before it gets to you. Like if I was going to go to the city commission and not know how, if I was going to get approval or not, then I haven't done my job. That's like, that is a bad deal. I should be talking. Didn't we just get another one that wasn't approved at the city commission because yeah. they were asking for, yeah. I mean, it just- It was like, the alleys. Was, you, it was the alleys. Right, but this is, that is not the first subdivision that's come in front of us that's been wildly not what the community wants. But then that, so, but that should be happening in your planning department. Not, right. to, not to throw Jim Woodall on the bus, but like right. that, that, so again, Tom and I go in business together and we're going to build a subdivision. We go to Jim very early on and we say, here's the land we're looking at. This is what we're looking to do. He should, before I've acquired the land, he should be telling me, here's the regulations you need to, mm -hmm. you need to well, adhere to. And then we do our cost figuring based around that regulation. Well, and, and this goes back to what we're saying, what, what you need to say in addition to what you've got there. And I say maybe for creating and preserving residential reasonable. Oh, yeah, creating and preserving, yeah. Part of the reason why I pushed for the land use plan so hard at the beginning of this was for this exact reason, is if you have the framework of rules mm -hmm. in place and it's codif codified that it is written, then it's up to whatever developers, attorneys at that point, because they've got to come and make a big stink about changing the zoning. Right now, as it is, they can come in and they can kind of strong arm you, or they can say, "We're going to do this. You need this. You need the the. We need you, we need you to do this. We need more inventory." But you see, one of the things that we're doing is all they're talking about is 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 zoning or how much or what how much density you can put put on a piece of property. That's right. They're talking about when the rubber gets to the road yeah. and someone comes in and says, "I want to do this." We don't have a what, real good plan for saying but, no right now. But what they're asking, for, trying to get there. what they're asking for, right. is 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 increased density, and that's yeah. Well, no, this one wasn't. Not. I'm thinking way. I'm in the way back machine with the example that I was thinking of, which was what was he asking for? It was a. Uh, um, was it the R? He wanted like R three density and R two neighborhood. No, this was there. like a subdivision out by the interstate. Oh, so this was a while ago. This was like over on the uh, right, across, PFL. Yeah, across from PFL. Yeah, over on the, and it was like it was like it, it wasn't even zoned so as residential. It's like highway commercial or something. So somehow they but they were kind of subdivided, but they were built. It was a sub. It was all housing, almost all housing, and it didn't meet like there were certain things. I can't remember it all now because it was on the. The problem with that property is they want, they want too much for it. There's no utilities. But, but there's, <laughs> they weren't doing any of the, the thing that it came down to for the commissioners were, um, what is it called? Like the conditions. So like there was nothing to mitigate sound. There was nothing to mitigate that it was like sandwiched by the railroad. There weren't things addressed with the so, amount of traffic. Well, anyway, but so, so your process. site review planning process should have handled that. And it was all, before it gets to and this was all before we, updated a lot of things that have been updated sure. so now it might be different sure. but, they were, asking, but they, they were like asking but weren't they asking for some exemptions so they went through a site yeah, review so process and they said you can't do it so they asked We've had for so many these things well, between now and then, then the answer should be i'm sorry we're not approving your exemption without some sort of incredible yeah, benefit to the community <laughs> so, right. like i mean that's the that's the answer the city well, can always say no well that was before we had like a lot of the foundational work we have done it now. is better so, before we had the growth policy, I found that well, everything was split a lot more because we didn't have that community. If, mm -hmm. if, the, if the growth policy yeah. is, if the growth policy is saying, I, I, I do, I know. I know. I I know. Yeah, I remember. Hearing, a lot, I mean, it was like 250 cents. I remember. Hearing they want to do condos, yeah. Yeah. It was not like a small. But they didn't want to pay. The other problem was they didn't want to pay for the utility connections. And they wanted the city to pony up the money to bring utilities under right. the Right, and like they didn't, we didn't, we didn't have a sidewalk or a tree. It was they not were willing to do that. Either. Yeah, it was not. It was not a good plan. Well, one well, body thinks so because I've taken a lot of heat. Did it someone call it the neighborhood death or something like the triangle of death? Because Somebody called it the like, triangle of death. <laughs> because kids would be what they were like, we're going to market to families, and it's like 
kids walk to school here. The, loca the location there for 200 units is a great location. You just got to do a lot of work to get that to some. The city has to grow to that point. You can't force something out there well, and then do say it would be. Well, be I didn't even get us off the topic. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, no, I, no, I, I didn't mean to get us off topic. My point was just that maybe I'm just holding on to like some flashback mm -hmm. memories that won't be an issue. I I, I, I I would just say mm -hmm. if your if your site review and your planning process, your subdivision process and your site review process and your zoning process are tight. The only time you should get an exemption is when there's a compelling community need that's going to be met. It has to be compelling mm -hmm. and direct. And well, then you would just. And you remember, like the last one where there was an exemption request, it passed the, it, the planning board approved it. It was a split vote, but it made it through the planning board. And it board. shouldn't have. Yeah. And it came to the commission. And again, it was a split vote, but it failed. And so that's, I don't know the solution. And, and the only reason why I would say I would have been a split if I was on either one of those. Was the fact that Discovery Vista had a phase one and a phase two that were approved underneath old regulations, and he was looking to continue that now. That's a reasonable request to make. Doesn't mean you have to approve. Mm -hmm. Well, if we if we take if we take the, the growth policy seriously, we're going to sort of rejig how we do this. I mean, the city's going to only grow so much, and it's going to be more infill than new development. Hopefully. I mean, well, no, be, I mean, that's what the growth policy says. This might be more if we of an elected it. official problem. Well, which, is, you know, which is a recommendation. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because as soon as the growth policy comes up, Tom, you'll get commissioners that are like, yeah, we need to do this. This is what the growth policy indicates. And other commissioners will say, yeah, the growth policy, we can take it or leave it. Like, we don't, I'm putting it in my own words, but yeah. like, we don't have to follow the growth policy. It's just a growth and you, policy. You don't. And, you do. well, and so, that's the power it's of a democracy. Well, <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, that's, why you, that's why you, that's why you, I guess that's why you elect the official thing you act, right? Like, that, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I don't mean to take us to a So, like, when, when, Track. when Doug was going to build the Fairfield, he, he came and talked to Manny and I about before he went to the site review planning. He's like, well, I really want to go up another floor. And it's like, well, the zoning doesn't allow it. He's like, well, I think I should go for an exemption. And he just looked at him and goes, no, just do what the zoning allows and then it'll all work out and you'll make more money. And so that's what he did. And he's making fine money and it's not a problem. And it's like, I just think I, I want to under, as a developer, I want to understand what the rules are and then I will make my numbers work or not work. Well, that, based that'll on determine that. whether you're right. right. And I don't want uncertainty. That I can't go raise thirty million dollars with a higher degree of uncertainty. That's just not going to work. So it's better well, to have good rules that are clear. And like, yeah. That's exactly it's and a process life. and a yeah. process. I think you also have rules. to have a process that when there is real compelling community benefit, there's a process to to de to deviate when it's appropriate. Well, the and, other the other thing that you could say, and I'm I'm rather than sort of you know talking about the history is is are you going to create incentives to make this happen which is really what you're saying and you know you if you if you want to say put a deep restriction on something to make to make a uh, yeah it'd be interesting to sort of see what kind of project would qualify for this you know like if you have a subdivision you know how big would it have to be and is that even possible within the existing? Like, I, I think I think if we were gonna like, if the city said, you know what, we wanted to do a, a community land trust on existing land, like I know I know Tom would certainly help spend time thinking about it, and I would too, and yeah. maybe even go so far as to take in lower margins and build the sucker to get it done, right? Mm -hmm. And all of that, I, I think to your point, like like there needs to be that flexibility right inside of it but i think you got to have a set of policies that lets it happen but the way this town's going to grow is not with huge new subdivisions hopefully hopefully mm -hmm. it'll it'll be sort of smaller you know assembled pieces of property or individual lots you know you you know there's maybe right. a, an acre or maybe you know it's not going to be 10 acres or 50 acres there's some places where you could maybe do that that's another it's small but it's yeah. small amount. and, and you then, know and and but if if you know if you have like a you know like a two acre r3 parcel you're you could build a good good number of units
but it's not. Yeah, I mean that that parcel behind Matt's is only ten, and yeah. you know, Tippins wanted to put two hundred fifty units on it. And but maybe he, that's not a bad place to do that. It isn't. He couldn't mm -hmm. get the numbers to work though because he paid too much for land. Well. I was just thinking about the ad hoc committee. Um, yeah, it looks like Missoula did a housing policy steering committee. So it's like longer than, it's yeah. not a permanent like mm -hmm. committee or permanent, um, I'm trying to think of, you know, like we have. Like city planning or zoning. Yeah, like we have like a, yeah. a planning board or we have like a parks and trails. Yeah. Oh, so instead of a permanent housing community, if we had like something more like a housing policy steering committee that lasted for a year or two years until. Yeah. So it wasn't permanent, but it, we could get the commission to think bigger than just like a one month committee. Yeah. Like this is going to be a group that meets for the next year or two years well, or however long it takes, to, you know, as we transition. To this I mean, it's, it's not going to, I mean, this is going to end up being a one pager. And we've, been, and, we've yeah. been, and we've been working on it for how long? Mm -hmm. And what they are going to need to do is, is put a lot more meat on the bone. It's going to be a report. We'll have to just keep that in mind when we present this to whoever yeah. it gets presented to. Because of what people read and what they interpret might not be exactly our intent. I, I do clear. think I think we should capture someplace your three. Your, and maybe it's a sub bullet underneath yeah, the that regulations one, but, but re regulations, incentives, and direct action. And maybe it's maybe it's like uh, well, so that, you know, there you go. Yeah, regulations, incentives. I, I would like in housing somewhere, be, just because it's such a big issue to 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 mention short term rentals. One hundred percent. That could be regulation. Bringing it up forever. Yeah, it's yeah, just gotta be here. Yeah. We gotta have a conversation at some point. We gotta. Well, and I think, and I. And what does that look? What does that answer look like? I, I haven't been able to get anybody to say this it's is. It's different what we're in different doing. communities. So there's there's a there's a lot of people that have, that have imposed all the way from saying you only get so many, you get so, you could do it under certain conditions. But what can we actually do that? Because we're there limited. Is, well, I think that that's where we need to have the conversation. So we've been, I've been. And we need the data for your day job. Day job. Yeah. My day job is more statewide, and housing is one of the things we talk about. And so different communities are handling it differently. Um, and I don't always know if we have to be self governing or if general powers can do things, which is why it requires some staff. Like the commission would have to direct the city manager would direct staff, but like Billings does something where they regulate vacation rentals and I think they do it through zoning where it's like certain zones yeah. they restrict maybe well, Bozeman does it that way I, and I think Whitefish does something also maybe well, or maybe Whitefish, Whitefish does it through talk. resort tax well so, so they we, charge a hotel and we can't resort do, tax and well, we can't do well, a resort tax well, that, any, any short term rental right now if they are licensed if they are licensed under what they should be pays that tax all of them do. Even here? Even here. Okay. That's statewide. Statewide. If they are licensed. Now, I will throw, I will say that most of them are. There are some that are, uh, there are some that are not for sure. And and that's something that the county health department, they're the ones who do the licensing of those. No, so, but yeah, so if they're not licensed, they're not paying bed tax. If they are licensed, they're all paying bed tax. I think, I remember we had a discussion. With Michael, and the city attorney, one point, just talking about ideas around short term rentals. And really, I felt like from that conversation, different communities are doing different things. There's not, but they're not, a lot has not been done. And I felt like our conversation was like, we could just try it. We could decide what we think might work, go with something. We might get sued. We might have to fight for it, but maybe that's okay. And we, we might not, and we might not get sued. Right. But, like, but we just need to go. All we need to just you, figure it out well, and try something. Right. Like all land use things at some yeah. point get tested, right? And that's how you find out what the law actually says because it goes to court and then the law has to be interpreted, right? And so not to say that it's like, we just want to get sued. It's like yeah. we need clarity on the law. And so that's maybe there. That we you have just to dip the toe eventually. Yeah, we exactly. have to dip, dip the toe. toe in. Right. We just decide. Right. We so, think it's the thing we want for so our community. Are, We're going to go yeah, for it. Right, but, but for the purposes of this document, you want to sort of mention that it should 
you we, should you need to investigate what can be done to yeah. control short term rentals. Right, like if anything, and what that looks like for living. So can we? And if we can, what what does that look like? Yeah, and maybe mm -hmm. this housing group could help. It's another little. It's, it's another. Kind of little, it's another. It's another little study. And this economic needs study, like, would paint a more complete picture of like maybe those houses, maybe those short term rentals aren't impacting our community at all. Like. Or maybe they we are. Maybe yeah, that's like the housing that yeah. we need. We need to find that know. data because that's exactly well, what we need. can't be the boogeyman unless we really know. Right. They can't be a boogeyman unless we actually know. So it's an right. interesting it's an doing. interesting conversation because a lot of people, there are some people who came in and bought up houses to create short term rentals as a direct investment. I know, I know some people. I also know more people who've been long-term locals who've done it to create income. Sure. Right, yep. so that they right. can afford Absolutely. to live here. And so that's the, so it's like, and that's what you have to figure out. Like, I feel like if you own it as a primary residence, like it's well, a like, different well, category. Okay, so the White House across my street, here. buddy yeah. bought that. I think I just want to make it a bottle yeah. and expand yeah. this business. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. So, um, so let's just take a break. Yeah, yeah. we're, yeah. we're yeah. not. We're not okay. so just now we're getting too much in the weeds you, on this. What we so, want to do is just say it needs to be addressed yeah. as okay. a as a goal. Okay, so I need to do this properly. So, can I have a motion to take a yes, five can. minute break? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion by Tom, a second by Wyeth. So, um, Wyeth, what you will do is you will stop the recording and then put us on mute and you can even take us and then also, and then uh, put us on mute. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna call this meeting back to order at 10.40 a.m. and just continue uh, from where we were. Thank I, you. I think, I think this needs a, a little more work, but I think we're on the right path here mm -hmm. is my general feel. Do we need to define the legislation, legislative action influence a little? Yeah, yeah, at the state level. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we're yeah. talking about. Well, I mean, you're actually talking about a specific initiative by the governor to look at this. Well, so what, no, what there's is, more than there's one. More than one thing. Is there? There, there, there's going to be, and we used to suspect that there's going to be. There's more a, than well, there we know there's yeah. more than yeah. one. There's interim, there's interim committees that are okay. working on land use law, changing and updating land use law mm -hmm. in the state. So it's already had, like it's already in the works. We're going to have, yeah, we're going to have to pay attention this session. So that's all I can say. Sure. Do you do you do you know Todd O'Hare very well? I think so. So he's the. Oh, he's an O'Hare, obviously. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Married to Melissa. He's Bobby Joe's, but he was you won't know like this, but he was the uh, he was the lobbyist for Powder River Mining, mm -hmm. and then that went under. Now he's the head of the chamber for the state, mm -hmm. and he's he's local, and he he uh, he's he's very well connected on this topic in Helena right now. So mm -hmm. it might be worth a conversation with him if anybody wants to, or just to to see what he's going on. He's that good old boy ranch type. So there's a certain kind of like game you play there, but, mm -hmm. but he's on my list to go spend some time with. Yeah, and then Melissa and I are both on a, a kind of like a land use planning call right now too with a, with a group of folks across the state as well, kind of in preparation for the, for the session. Who's, in who, our who else? It's our day. It's our day. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't yeah. want to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. But but he's but, a lobbyist. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's probably maybe worth a conversation. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. But I think there will be things to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Not everything will be relevant to Livingston, but there will certainly be things that would influence potentially some of the, what's on our list. Just, that's I, with my commissioner hat on. That's what I care yeah. about is implementing our growth policy and yeah. making sure we have the tools as a city to be able to do it. Make sure we don't lose tools. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think there could be a, and I'm just going to float this out there as an idea, but I think there could be an, an item here under housing that was like, um, what, was to to uh, to strengthen the site plan, zoning plan, and planning process. You've been pushing for that. Well, no, I, I, I well, I, I the only reason why I bring it up is it's like it's that it's that it's the point of leverage in the process with developers 
to say, and maybe maybe the committee can have an outcome to it. We don't need to put anything here, but ultimately that's where the rubber is going to meet the road in most of the recommendations. I, I would let me put that a different way. Sure. It, I mean, right now you've got a fairly fairly clear zoning code. I think so. Yeah, and and what you're really looking for is if somebody wants to do something with some there that there ought to be a set of tools. Yes. That are predictable. Yes. That that can that can give some, that can incentivize some of this stuff. Yes. And and why don't we just say it that way? Yes. I think that's that's what I'm trying to and, say. And and mm -hmm. that that you know, I mean, the zoning code is if if it gets in, I mean, some people are gonna always ask for an exception or 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 appeal it or that sort of mm -hmm. thing. It's just the nature of this. But mm -hmm. you know. What we're what we're talking about is is, and maybe it's another 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 thing, or maybe it's just under this ad. It, it's what the maybe it's covered there. No, no, it's what this ad hoc committee should really be doing, and it says it is incentives. Well, and I and, and I would I would remind us too, and and maybe I I'm missing where you're going with this, but under land we do have a job in the zoning code subdivision and plan urban development process yeah and, and the way i've been thinking about that maybe this is my own limitation mm -hmm. is that we sort of have this growth policy it's like okay let's get let's get those things implemented that matches that what i'm trying to say is that okay now we have this competing priority that's housing mm -hmm. what are the tools then that we and you said it right what are the tools that we use then to create, and maybe it's the committee's responsibility to sort of flush that out. I think that's I think that's the purpose of that ad, ad hoc community. I think you could put a little list under the ad hoc committee, like you could have it address short term rentals, and you could have the thing that you're describing now, because we could say to the commission, like, hey, here's some things that were taking up a lot of air in the room, and we couldn't get any more specific than this. I think commissioners, you need a special group there we go. just to direct you. I'm just putting that out. And then, yeah. if, and then once it directs the commission to say yes on some, because you need well, the commission to say yes on something well, before staff can work so on it. You know just, what I mean? You're just, you're, yeah, just, you're, just, all, you're just aware of them during the, you know. So you need, you need to get the commission to like make a decision on what they want it's staff to work on. And if it's written down, it'll make it easier because now you're giving a menu of options to the commission. Yeah. And then, when the commission goes on this, then it gives another menu to the staff. So now the staff know what's important, or the city manager knows what's important. And to incentivize housing development. Yeah. I mean, you're really, you're really doing it for housing. You're not going to do it for, yeah. for, for commercial development. You're not trying to, you, you don't need incentives for commercial development. It's easier. Well, Depends we can have that. We can have that conversation yeah. later. We have people come on meetings. I feel like the, the stronger and more stringent the definitions are for the developments that we want to have come in, is the is the incentive. It's going to cost money and time to not or to look for an exemption. Where if we have a solid plan of what we want in front of us, it should be fairly simple. What, what, no, no, what'll happen? So, Bozeman's a great example of this right now, right? They have like a really strong set of policies associated with development inside mm -hmm. the city. And they have a process that's, it's, it's actually very timed out and you know exactly how long that's going to take. Right. What you, what that does then is it sets the market parameters for how everything's going to get done within that. Right. The problem that they have, and they still have to this day, and the reason why they're not addressing affordable housing at all is they have none of the tools to encourage a deviation from that process mm. because of a compelling community good, right? So it, it and, and the one example away from that is that really that four-story apartment complex behind Walmart that they break right on the interstate there. And that, that was because I think HRDC did a phenomenal job lobbying the city very early on with the developer mm -hmm. to, to sort of, to get that done. But it was it was a yeoman's work. It was a political action to do that development. Now everybody's like, "Oh, it's the best thing we've done. We've got reasonable housing." And it's like, "Well, you should just sit down and have a discussion with your developers and be like, this is what we really want." I would, right? right. Yeah, I would, add, I would. I would add to this maybe you know, investigate or opportunities 
Yeah, land. Look at look at city on land. Look at that's that's a good idea. Investigate direct action opportunities. Yeah, I mean, and you know, we know what what. Can you make sure you put city on land as? Well, it could, it 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 could also be school district land. It could also be the hospital. It could be you know, I mean. You know, it, it's it, you know all those people sort of have their yeah you know, they could they could do right. some yeah you know, there's that twenty acres at the 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 the, the yeah, school district that that right. could be a community land transfer yeah we could team up with the school district to do that and as long as the school district is the one that develops it we don't well know what 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 you would do it governments. I think yeah. Why would you, you why would, would the government ever develop it? No, no. You, you you would do a proposal yeah. for a developer to do it. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. You use the fact that you yeah. own the land to incentivize that. Yeah. No, that's that's how that works. No, I mean governments do do that, but they're much bigger governments. Oh, that's kind of true. Got the New York Housing Authority. We we don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> And there would be other opportunities. We don't have Robert here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides yeah. city, school, district, and county, there might be other clever. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just wanted like examples so the next collaboration. Yeah, group of people that pick it up and understood what they're saying. I do like the idea of having some sort of special subcommittee because this mm -hmm. is more. This is, we, it takes more time to have these conversations than we have. We're not yeah. asking for the commission, or and it's not a planning board topic, and it's not a zoning topic. I think this is getting pretty good. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. No, it's 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 at the it's at the level that you want this. What topic. brand is that? I just need a C, USB C charger. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Um, no, it's starting to be at the right level yeah. for this dog. Will this work? Will this work? Yeah. No, you know, you're not telling them what to do. You're and there's a lot of different ways that have to go I mean, forward. These are all goals, and they're pretty specific goals. It, it's nice that they're that they're not these kind of blue sky, yeah. you know, that just kind of wash through your head and say, "What did that mean?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this kind of addresses it. I'm really trying to find a hole. Um, I'm just trying to like go through all the conversations about everybody that I've heard bitch about trying to do anything. And I think, I mean, part of that's they're just, they don't have enough context, but okay. it it's, feels pretty good. Here's one that I hear all the time. Yeah. And maybe this are, maybe you guys, maybe this already addresses it. One topic that comes up a lot is, um, downtown and the spaces that aren't being used that could be used downtown so i'm specifically thinking of upper levels of businesses that the could men be, the high house haven't gotten there yet yeah that haven't like and the challenges with it right there's like some really specific i remember michael and i talked about this many times over the course of my time as a commissioner but there's it sounds like and maybe you guys know more about this than me that there's some really specific barriers to property owners developing housing on second floor that are really specific to being in historic buildings, no, older no, buildings. I don't think so. No, absolutely. I've you don't think it. so? You I've know, there's a monetary like asbestos I've done, I've done, system. No, I think I've, done it. I've done it twice. Okay. Um, so I think well, like, well, well, we well, encourage well, more. <laughs> well, but. well, so here's so, here's what's in blow. And you know the 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 ones I've done have been pretty specific. Um, so you're doing the one above Elk River that I remember yeah. we voted on that. What's the other one? I did the one on Main Street where where um, in the photography studio or Bob Osborne is. Oh, used okay. to. So above the I did right both next of to those. the sport right there upstairs. Now it's it's interesting. There's those interior lots. You know, like. Look at say the Danforth building. It's a it's an interior lot, and it's and it covers the whole lot. The trouble with that would be getting light and air into the middle, other than from the roof, because you can't go out the sides because of the fire code. You could in the eighteenth in the nineteenth century, but you can't now. 
Um, oh, cool. Are you going to pull it up for us? Yeah. Thank you. Just so talk. Describe what he's talking about. Let me see what he's talking about. There's, there's certain buildings that are going to be a lot more. I mean, the first one I was looking at was was up, up above the uh, bar and grill. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, when they renovated that thing, they made one really critical mistake. They only put one way in at the corner. So if you if you were trying to if you were trying to develop that, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't you, you have one way in and one way out. And the so reason is a lot of hallways. It's well, no, you only have one way in and one way out. Yeah. If 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 can't do the, the fix to that which used to exist is they put the bar against the back. If you move that bar at the bar and grill out four feet, you could have a second way out. It would be easy. Uh, I mean, but, but now but you're eating I, up to the real estate of the only thing that makes any money in that place, which is the bar. Well, you're, you're, you're not, you're not eliminating the bar. You're, 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 Oh no, you keep it. You're just getting made. It's I, take four feet away from I mean, they just, <laughs> oh, I, I'm, the, uh, only there for I, but but, but it, it, those things are really kind of individual and how they so, so is there anything that the city can do to oh. like incentivize more of our downtown getting so just to sort of like like um the other things i see going on with it that doesn't go right to your question but a lot of the upstairs in the buildings are owned um, by families who have them for a really long time and they just don't they don't nobody's interested in putting them on the market and they're getting the people are getting older and they're kind of like it's just gonna be my kids problem and um particularly the the old park hotel which is above the hyatt that whole space there mm -hmm. and then above the mint the mint hotel those two spaces john fryer's building yeah john fryer's another example but and so so that so there's just not access to the development right um i think to to tom's point he you know you've taken you've taken the path of of sort of like higher end because of some of those costs that are intrinsic with doing a historic remodel it's not cheap no i think what i think what what worked for me is the fact that i can't do fancy that's right up there mm -hmm. and and that's probably what it'll be that's probably what's going to work there and and the, like the main got re developed we did that right we did the that we did that it was bought by a group that does almost exclusively commercial development in fact they've never done a residential we project or this one. Contractor. we were the contractor yeah. we were the gc on it mm -hmm. um they spent 250 a square foot on the remodel and they probably should have spent 400 and we did something, they did something with the city. It was some sort of, oh, we just like uh, wrote a letter or something for a grant, I think. Yeah, right? it was yeah, because, because they, they had, had everything they needed already. They already they had, just had to like vote on yes to support. They had fire project. access already yeah. and, and they had multiple exits and egresses. And so it sounds like it's really individual. But it, it they, would, they would not have done that if they could go back and do it again. And the reason for it was the costs just like, way exceeded their budgetary amounts for what they were trying to do well that place was i at first when we got asked to do it it was we're like talking about the fix the no the main hotel the main. not the main i'm sorry not the main i'm apologize we didn't do the main i'm talking about um i'm talking about the um above um across from pickle barrel oh yeah excuse me I oh I, I, I was thinking yeah, about i was thinking about the old like yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, main, I, yeah, I that's what we always call it. No, no, you're yeah. right. You're right. I, we didn't do that. We didn't. No, we didn't do that. We you were the one. Lewis and Callum. Lewis and Well, yeah. I mean, in, in my case, I did very well, but I sold those for really fancy prices. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that works. Yeah. yeah. Mark. It's, yeah, it's just an awesome. And it was a lot of unused that. commercial space too, which is not but, typical, right? For Livingston, like we. But that was like a big chunk of commercial space too. I mean, most of our what? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just Pennies. Pennies. More most was empty. Pennies was empty. Penny, For Penny, no, Pennies was. Pennies remember. used to be a department store. It used to be Pennies, mm -hmm. and when it went out, John Bailey bought it. He was using it as a warehouse. It was just right. Could have been anything. And now you have um, bookstore and then the clothing I store just and something. Took, took the Catherine ground floor. 
took the ground floor back to uh, retail, yeah. which it was initially, and the upstairs was derelict. It, yeah. was, it was an odd fellow's home. So I think what we're talking about, a lot of the buildings is, um, a lot of there's the like commercial or retail or whatever, but then this is not used. And like, that was totally not. The, the, other, th the other thing that both those properties has is, well, that I made it in one, but for high end, it really helps have parking. Required. And, and and parking. I made parking in the, yeah. in the pennies boat. I took off the back of the building and made a parking lot. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Oh, um, it's required. I mean, you deal yeah, with no, it no, on, on high end. You, I mean, you're, no, no, it's you, required you, for market. It's yeah, it's required. required. It's, it's not required for the. And, and in fact, in pennies, I put in an elevator, and uh, which is damned expensive <laughs> and way more complicated than I realized. But it's uh, it's done and it, and it did okay. But well, it looks good. The street looks nice. Yeah. It's a nice. Well, and, it, and the idea was to sort of do enough of it, you know, and along with the bakery and now there's another place where Gateway used to be in. And I wish there were, there was more retail on the street, mm -hmm. but at least there's enough to make somewhat of a critical mass there. It really um, changes that street, kind of like Neptune's moving into that one building, really just like pulled everything over. Yeah. I feel like that development. Yeah, because that's like old over. street view, isn't it? Yeah. It's because it could be, it could be bigger. Yeah, and that's that's that's, big that's what it that's what it used to. Oh, that, that it's pretty big. That's yeah, pretty huge. It scared a lot of people. It should have scared me more. <laughs> How many you have three units up there, right? If I remember two. Three, two, okay. Um, well, the other thing about that upper floor is it only goes back to the square feet. Piece. So it's only about 3,000 square feet. About 10,000 square foot footprint? Approximately. It's three, it's three city lots. Yeah. And it was, it was set back a little bit from the alley. Yeah. I set it back 30 feet just to get parking. Sure. And uh, I think that. And, the, and that's the old bank. There's a new bank there now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I miss the old bank. I can't believe they blasted the clock tower when they were bringing it. I do not care for that. You could have just taken it out. Look at how nice this was. Look, look it's a pretty building. You know, I, I, I don't understand what the what the thought process was. <laughs> they spent a shitload of money to make it. Oh, unbelievable <laughs> amounts. Of, I know how much they spent. For they spent ugly, ugly villain. Okay, so remember we're on, I'm going to remind you we're recording. <laughs> I don't care. I'm on the record. I told Brad that. What are you doing on that ugly building? Can you turn around the Why camera and go downtown? I want to like, go towards um. So these are, these are all old. Do you remember, this is what I remember, oh, these gosh. steps on the sidewalk. How Livingston, and if you go up another block, I think it's even, wasn't even more, or maybe they redid the street before. It was just a nightmare with a stroller. Right here. Yeah. Oh, here. I was like, oh, this is not made for people with wheels. Well, it's, yeah. it's different now. And so, yeah, it's nice you can walk down. Now, the mint, the mint, on the other hand, because it has that street side thing, it would be easy to develop. So this, so, is, the, yeah. so this is the conversation that I've heard sort of um, people keep wondering how we can do more with those kinds of space, these kinds of spaces. They're not for sale. Yeah, that's, that's the, the first problem. I, know, I don't know. Well, there's nothing we can do. And, and, and then, if, and then to be totally anything. honest with you, if they go for sale, you're not putting in cheap apartments. No. Right. No. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you want to incentivize something, or, you know, and maybe this is something that should be looked at as downtown yeah. gets looked at. Is one thing that Livingston doesn't have that most what places like this do have is some public. The Hallmark store, not the public. Oh, and yeah. okay, never mind. I, you know, you I'll call myself something nice. Because in you residents know, can like. You know, I think as you retire the bonds that, that the redevelopment sold for for the street work, you, you might that might be a good next step is to think about. You know, and then for just to do, I'm sorry, public yes. some, pub, some public parking. I, well, if we really want to have a conversation with public parking, I've got a model that would, we could do it tomorrow. Um, it came from the Hilltop guys. They're like, this is how everybody does it. I mean, it's a private public partnership. And so private development, public, public misuse the bonds and it's recovered through parking fees against the bonds. So we need to go to the downtown. But you'd have to charge for parking. No, you can subsidize it somehow. 
it, there's a lot of ways to do it. He said, so there's a, it's, done all, it's done all over the place. It's done all over the place. He's like, we have a, they have a whole team of people that does municipal parking. That's what they do. Well, and there's a couple of, there's and, a, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, there's, a there's target, there. there's target one. Yeah. Well, no, that, I mean, and he's been really clear. He's like, if you want to do a parking garage, we'll, we will sell you the land for a parking garage. So but, there's a place to put these conversations right on our list then maybe we need to make a place on our list there was so i think it was under well, land, under land use should we have we're, we're, isn't that downtown and parking where, downtown where's, and where's, where was parking. down where was down downtown, downtown, downtown plan that it's parking, parking in the so put like asterisk uh you know what <laughs> well kidding. so so the answer though is if you have a city manager in place that mm -hmm. city manager could approach either the right people or, or we could vice versa and say, hey, you know. Right. And actually the way the way that the Hilltop guys would recommend doing this is actually the front is shallow retail here. It's not, oh, and, the then, and then it hides the it's parking. Obvious. And then you come in and then the parking garage is behind it and up it. And I mean, they're like, like you, you, you make a ton of money doing that. It's not no, even a problem. And, and frankly, you, you wouldn't, I think they have that Missoula now, some newer part there, of there's, there, It's done all over the place. There's so many redevelopment agencies and districts and mm -hmm. things that have, that have done that. You, yeah, you'd want to plug that hole. You know, from an urban design point of view, you don't want that, you don't want the American lot to be, a, to yeah. be an open parking lot. Did you see the, well, um, what, when really... those college students came and did their um, presentation at Lincoln School? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, it's, they kind of were finding the holes downtown too. It was kind of interesting. I, 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 I wish they would have. Uh, but it was that, interesting to think about space in a different way. Was my point. Like, and you know, endless, endless pots of money is you, you completely redo the guest house into something that's reasonable oh, and not okay. like a dive, and you but, turn it into a boutique hotel and then attach it and a, and, a, and you attach it to a parking garage that's got store front faces and then the top. Oh, the parking garage becomes an event center, but that's endless pots of money. That's well, endless. I mean, that's it, that's it, what it, I would do. That's it, seventy million dollars. If, if you were, if you were, what else would we get through today? <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> this is great conversation. We probably need to get back. Um, I know. I know. This is great conversation because yeah. I love that. Well, that's money. that's why that's why when when somebody gets going on that on yeah, that, on that or or. There's a downtown plan that's yeah. being proposed. And I think it's really important what that looks at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, often those things sort of end up on the shelves because they sort of say, well, you could do this and you could do right. that. And what it really should be looking at is what can the city do? What, what, well, first of all, what should be there in a generic sense, not a specific sense, but like on that American thing, it's it's obvious what you do. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to you have to plug. And if that Bruce hole. hadn't died in an airplane crash, it would have already been done because well, Bruce Erickson would have done it. But it passed on to his kids, and his kids don't have the wherewithal to go do it. I mean, this is out of Tyler's mouth. I mean, this yeah. is not me saying this. This is yes. him I've saying. Talked, I've talked to Tyler. This right? is him saying it about his dad. He's like, mm -hmm. my dad would have already had it done, but. Where, you know, I have to split it with my sister, and that's complicated. And yeah. <laughs> well, but yes, but we have some, but we have some avenues, right? So we the, the idea of this ad hoc committee. We also know that there is going to be a downtown plan. There's already funding for the downtown yeah, plan, um, and so and it, then it becomes our responsibility to participate in those things to make sure that the stuff is I would work. I would like to participate in that downtown mm -hmm. level. Yeah, you I should. should. You should. Yeah, I mean, absolutely yeah. should. Yeah, you absolutely should. I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna look like it. I don't but, uh, well, I and guess I there'll be a lot of public there's well, a lot of plan, yes. plan can just mean an awful lot of things. Well I think it's important to have connectivity between yeah. all these plans of ours so yeah. that they're yeah that they match mm -hmm. and they go together. Well housing and housing is not exclusive yeah. Yeah. None of this is like mutually. Downtown should have housing in it, but but those you know the the sort of big chunks of land that still exist downtown, and there's really three of them. 
you know, there's the there's a lot on 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 B Street. There's there's the American. It's important land for our community. And even for the, all the reasons even that even even that even that that whole piece of land between between the Murray Hotel and the and the post office, even though it has several ownerships. Yeah, you know, that's something the city could do. Well, you Eric, could, American owns most of that. Yeah, I thought that was American American post office not, owns it in But it's split between the. But it's a it's an awkward size. Is it? America, American owns the parcel next to the Murray, and they just let people use it. And then the post office owns the rest of it. Now, the last know, thing Tyler would do is force parking regulations. Yeah, wants <laughs> well, oh. to do that anyway. Well, I know him too. <laughs> and <laughs> and and. Uh, but but yeah, for example but for example if the city could, if if you could somehow do some deal where the city could combine those and make it bigger you, a bigger chunk of land is much much more efficient if you're going to redevelop it especially at that scale or tighten it like that you're going to try to get land from the post office you are bold we'll work on the railroad next yeah right um, I'm just saying if you could do that. Blood from a stone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, man, I, I I think we've exhausted the subject. Yeah. I don't know what else think, to say. I yeah. think I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I I, I mean, it I think it's been a couple hours well spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's yeah. good. This and is it's the like, hardest it, one. It, yeah. Say the best. Should we go back? So I just want to like the the general thread because I want to take this and then go out and read it again but the general thread that we're saying is that we, we we agree that we're going to try to implement the land use policy and the growth policy as it's stated which inherently creates um the dynamic where we're interested in more infill and small development not large track sprawl and then on the housing side what we're saying is to kind of counteract that limitation of scope we're trying to say we need to create a set of policies that preserve and create reasonable priced housing yeah and those are the balances between the two okay mm -hmm. and at the same time well within mm -hmm. that within that context mm -hmm. and the only last issue affecting this is we want anything that we're doing to be connected through active transportation mm -hmm. and public transportation methods well there's a implied in all of that is adequate infrastructure which includes all of that yeah mm -hmm. and then while all that's happening local services have to be maintained <laughs> like right while well, everything else is going on we can't let like the mm -hmm. core part that we already have fall apart right yeah okay. in fact we need to make it better let's yeah i mean just keep it great so so let's do this hashtag because we've got 50 minutes left mm -hmm. so let's do this let's go back and let's read the vision statement again. Okay. And then um, let's go through and let's just flag anything underneath the goals that we think um, needs revision or consideration. And not like wordsmithing. The whole thing needs to be wordsmith, but like that maybe is off the mark or that we should reconsider. And after that discussion, we can revisit that. For an hour on Wednesday. I agree. And then mm -hmm. and 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 just give yourself. Then, up a couple of days to yeah. chat yes. a little bit. And then um, I think too, what I would recommend is if we're close, like maybe when we get a, a wordsmith to draft, like if yeah. Max takes a pass this, I think we should all just personally and privately just show it to a few people and just say like, this is, this is kind of where we're at and just get some non-involved initial gut feel react. Mm -hmm. Just for those like, those people not in the room who stand at the meeting and go, but you said, you know, right? What's the unintended cuts on this that we're not thinking? Well, about? could you? I mean, the rest of the commission doesn't know what we're doing yet. No, they'll learn when we bring it to them. Yeah. They'll Do learn you, when we bring it to them. Is that going to all happen in a public process or can yeah. that happen a little bit? A it little bit. Happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. As soon as we bring in another commercial, a commissioner, sure. it's a walking meeting. Yeah. Since we're okay. going to vote on it, we can't do that. But it's just like it's Montana state law. Because we're working on something that we're going to vote on, and then if they, if any, if we have a quorum, it must be noticed. It must all be public. So but you couldn't talk to somebody else on the commission separately. No, no it's the walking meeting. The walking meeting. But but we will have time to discuss it as a commission. And typically, what we do is somebody else also from the committee, whatever mm -hmm. committee it is, will come and help present. So it's not just Carrie and I. So I, I think there. this needs a little bit of like. Yeah. yeah, not in the echo chamber. Right, right, right. Yeah, we need a little. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's let's just 
read the vision statement, Livingston is a community that is engaged, equitable, and resilient, economically vibrant and diverse, fostering its unique physical character, maintaining its relationship to the neighboring open land. Any, um, anything jump out there for anybody? Pros or negatives? I think that, I think the sort of, I tell her the, the, the categories are really what make those statements mean something. Maybe even bring them to the front of the line. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the same thing. Are you talking about the, like like the, the people? people? Yeah. No, the, the, the things we're talking about are the people, the economy, the place, and the context. Yeah. Um, the other thing that jumped out for me then is if we bring the, the second line, th that it, I, I almost think that line should be vibrant and economically diverse. We're not trying to say we're looking for diversity in that line we're talking about diversity of economy we don't want to be just a tourist town right mm -hmm. vibrant economically diverse just moving yeah. out economically yeah. yeah i like that economically diverse and vibrant what did you say why vibrant and economically diverse oh but i think tom's got it right economically diverse and vibrant is actually better okay. yeah yeah um okay I, I love the fostering. Jane has it. James has it. Fostering its unique character. Mm -hmm. I love it. Physical character. Unique physical character. Yeah. Maintaining its relationship to the name. To the name. What I like about this is it feels balanced and it feels inclusive, not to overuse that word. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, for something where you're making where, where you have this few words yeah. every word's got to count yeah mm -hmm. and so often these things are just pebble. and so our suggestion while we're looking at this and i'm going back and looking at this old document which is where we started right we're running we're gonna go with a vision and we don't feel like we need the mission right because this yeah. vision right. kind of says it all yeah. Right. Okay. When, if you, um, the reason why you'd want a, a mission, so vision is destinational, mm -hmm. right? The reason why you would want a mission is if there was a higher outcome that you were trying to achieve. So, like corporations, like if you read Patagonia's, right, it's like to, I don't know, create an environmentally conscious and engaged world, right? It's nothing to do with making no, clothing, no, yeah. right? So, there's a, there's a higher, mission like i don't think we have that here right like we don't want to be like the the best city in the planet or something this, like this, nothing, this, you know, right? this kind of covers it yeah, yeah i think it i don't think we need a mission statement i think we're already there mm -hmm. best city on the planet i feel like <laughs> <laughs> there you go i think as the resident fuddy duddy i don't i don't actually see anything wrong with it i like I like what it says. The resident fuddy daddy. Yeah, I'm a pretty fuddy daddy kind of guy. <laughs> Self described fuddy daddy. Oh no, there's lots of people that describe me as that. <laughs> well, you, you did it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you did it yourself. Yeah, I don't, nothing jumps out at me as being. Well, what I've always liked about this is it's, it, yeah. is it something where you know what to do when you read it? I agree. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it without without telling you what to do, you've you've sort of described the subject headings of what you're supposed to address. You know, because four people in a room shouldn't be talking, shouldn't be doing that, yeah. right? But we can take a crack at what's important, and that's what this says. Like what I have the original if you want to do that. It's in the PowerPoint. No, I think it's I don't even think you, I, I think this becomes the original. Yeah, no, and we I mess with that. Yeah, Whatever I, we had before. I'm just we, thinking about where we were. <laughs> well, I'm looking back at this because it's been a while. And 
Okay. And it's all on one page. Yeah. Let's look at goals. Do we need this? This was really for us. That was kind of to get to where, yeah. Do we, does that add value? I don't think so. Does it matter? No. No, that's sort of what, what that's where we started, right? That that's the table of contents, and then the mm -hmm. meets below it. Yep. So now this is goals. I think we should think about order oh. for this section. Like what because order often matters, right? Like how well, we mm -hmm. how do we want to order these land, so, housing, transportation services. If I'm gonna jump right say out. Say that again. Uh, land. land, housing, transportation services. Move, move housing up below land. Yep. It seems it's the next step after you determine the land use is the next thing is let's work on what we're going to do with it. And I think development, land use, and those issues are are the are the most important to address. I mean, they're, right. they're sort of the front burner issues. The other ones come with it, they need to be addressed, but they come with it. They come you with have it. to do the first two in order to get the second two. Well, and there's stuff that, that... do you want to say something about downtown and land use rather than transportation? Is where's the right place for that? Can you say that one more time, Tom, so I can... Should the, down, should the downtown plan be under land use or should it be under transportation? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Mm. Yeah, it should. That's a good question. It yeah. got here because it came up under parking. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, we don't really... That's you know, it really started good. with parking. It's not really the thing we care about. All these yeah. things are holding hands with each other anyway. They're so relaxed. Well, and it's so... It, it, it's it's so short that you you, you read it all at once you don't mm -hmm. you're, right. you're not it's an executive summary really mm -hmm. what's the pre-executive summary to, right. to to a further document you're gonna die uh oh sorry <laughs> what about you so i'm gonna die but it's okay. well you've Please got don't. this you've got the zoom meeting on there so do one of does somebody need to pick it up this is a c right here i don't know what's plugged into but and it's plugged into myself and my computer's about to die. And I forgot to bring my treasure. So C USB C. It looks, it looks like a little circle. It's like a little oval. Let me see what I got. Most everything in there. No, I just have commission stuff. No. Negatory. It's okay. It's all right. But you're you you are holding a meeting. That's the problem. So do we does somebody else need to get? You could pick up the meeting, or we can just, or we, or we could just move quick and adjourn. Okay, we're, we're yeah, we don't we're have, we don't, we don't have to go to. Yeah. The, we don't have to. What's your charge at, sir? Ten percent. We went to eco mode. Sorry, right. it's all good. Okay, we're gonna be okay. Keep moving. Okay. So I like. Can we move down? Sir James's ordering. I think that mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I don't think so. Just Sir James. So. <laughs> funny day. So funny day. <laughs> okay. Uh, adjust current regulations to implement the growth plan. That's great. By yeah. specifically just reading through the land. Yeah, All we're looking for here is um, things that we want to address on Wednesday at this point. Mm -hmm. Adjusting the zoning code, subdivision, and plan urban development process. Addressing the extraterritorial district jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Create community gateway overlay zones. Create policies that will develop infill and limit sprawl. And downtown plan that includes parking and development. The words need help here. But yeah. What kind of development? Economic development? Or downtown development? Any development downtown. Anything? Okay. Well, it could be it, it could be any of development could be any of those okay. balanced mixed use development. Downtown, wait, maybe we don't want mixed use development downtown. I mean, maybe we don't. It's, it's like you it's, shouldn't have Wilcox's size coming downtown. It's it's, 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 it's mixed it's mixed use where they want a pretty right. big use. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't it's know if it's worth the finding for his business and yeah. for the downtown. Right. I think it's I think it's best to leave it a little industrial. Yeah, I think a little yeah. So I don't even know what too specific, but yeah, I think it's, it's always good to ask and see what your brain is saying. More of a okay. commercial or light industrial is where they should go. Mm -hmm. They won't know because that business doesn't make any money. So they, they're stuck with the thin dimes. Yep, thin dimes. You got it. 
All right, what's next? Housing. Housing. Implement a plan for creating and preserving reasonably priced housing. I like I like that. Yeah. Well, we've um, we've we've that's so new that maybe we should just leave it as it is and go to the rest of it. Let's go there. Yeah. Okay. Transportation. Yeah. Develop the needed infrastructure for continued growth, specifically addressing connectivity, including pedestrian to the north side. Implement an active transportation plan, stormwater and ground mitigation requirements for 10,000 residents. Man, we got specific here. Mm -hmm. I like that. They're specific. Um, we're specific everywhere. I well, want more on water. <laughs> you want more on water? Yes. Okay. I want something that, like, I think that we should be, and again, this is because I just did this massive trip around mm -hmm. the state and seeing what the state of water is in Montana is something that will keep you up at night. Um, I think we should be really, and I suspect this is already happening, but really like, examining our i don't have the words yet really like taking a look at like our resilience when it comes to access to clean water and i don't know exactly the way to say that i guess what i'm getting at i'll tell you in generic words and maybe you guys can help me zero in what i'm concerned about is water scarcity is getting worse in montana could be a lot of communities are already in a much scarier spot than we are. At the same time that water is becoming more scarce across Montana, more communities are dealing with pollution than have had to deal with in the past, either historic pollution or like pollution to their water supply. And so when we have things happen like drought or floods and we see all of those critical water things get even more pressure what's the outcome like the outcome is like what we would need, if we need to protect our water and make sure that we're thinking into the future about how we're protecting our clean water supply i don't know if it means more wells i don't know if it means thinking about um storm water or water retention like all of those things are related and take water engineers to think about okay. but if we wait until we're already in a critical spot for water we're too late we get all the water from wells we have well water. Okay. I'm just curious. I don't know. Yeah, we do. And I didn't know you're like most a lot of communities use the water from the river. We actually don't. We use wells. Yeah, it's and so um so and we have them. I know we have them around town and I know our public works thinks about water, but I think it'd be good. Just make it a make it a, yeah. So how do you feel about develop a plan to preserve access to clean water as we grow? Yeah, I think that's great. Do you guys think that gets yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great plan. Left field, I'm like, no, I can go right about water. It so also, I also think it addressed some of the um, um, in line, end of line water uh, yes. areas that we have, like PFL is an example, mm -hmm. hospitals an example, most of the North Town developments an example. Right. Like, there's no redundancy in those areas. Yeah, and it gives Public Works hopefully a chance to like put in some projects we haven't thought about when it's yeah. even. Like managing wastewater as a component well, of clean water, right? Like, right. Mm -hmm. And most of this transportation infrastructure section is keeping up with growth, yeah. which we addressed in the first. Yep, yeah, I like mm -hmm. it. Well, yeah, no, I think that's great. It's like part it's of the complimentary. Yeah, yeah. Totally is. yeah, No, it's saying it is it's so saying good. as we grow, we've yeah. got to pay attention to this. The other thing that we're not talking about when we think about growth that just came up. This is all on my mind because of this trip that I just went on. Is um the interface between where our city boundary is with um, the things that happen to the mm -hmm. city. So wildfires and also um, impacts with wildlife. wildlife. Yeah, so as cities are getting bigger and also as the climate is changing, we're seeing more impacts with fire and, we're, and we don't have like fire building regulations in Livingston, which it's is- terrifying. And also, um, we see that? more incidents of conflict. You mean wildfire building? Yes. Because there is building there. The right. building code has. Wait, well, we, 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 we've never city. adopted specifically the wildfire section. Right. There's no defensible space. There's no in town. So there are state codes around wildfire stuff, but I don't think that we adopt those. And I don't know if it's a capacity issue or what. But also, um, wildlife. Mm -hmm. conflict is on it's only going up as cities get bigger and climate is changing and so animals are changing their migration habit and where they hang out um i met with a guy a 
bear biologist for the cycle in northern Yellowstone region. And it is concerning to hear um, what we're unprepared for as conflict is expected to not ever go down. So I think that's something. I feel like if I can interject a please. tiny bit, that the ETJ is our opportunity for that. Like, and if we can't do an ETJ, I don't want us to lose the opportunity. Right. So I love the goal from a firefighter standpoint that the urban interface has a defined boundary and that if we can't do the ETJ, we should at least in our mind up to the boundary where we determine develop a plan where we have an urban interface. So the urban interface, if we can do an ETJ, it's two miles out. But if it isn't, it's right here. And this and is an urban interface need. would include fire. Fire, wildlife. I mean, everything that's okay. yeah. outside the boundary that would be a uh, point of conflict. Yeah. yeah. So, so would the goal then, and I'm listening to all of you, be to define the wild, the urban wildland interface boundary? Or is plan. it just to find the boundary? It'd be a plan. I think it's a plan. It's a plan. Because we need like policy that says, okay, if you live in this area, right, you and you're like, you know, a hundred yards from here, you need to have 25 feet of defensible space around your house. I mean, it's or like there's certain building materials that are less likely to like class cover. three roofing material as opposed or to wood certain, shakes, certain kinds of garbage cans that are less likely yeah. to like care proof right. yes. wildlife interactions. Right. Whatever. There's, I think there's like some low hanging fruit that we're not. Well, right. And all of this stuff is more of a county issue than our issue, but it's still important. Well, until it becomes our issue, when the wind blows, like, okay, Denton last year exactly. burned down in December yeah. because no. the wind blew grass yeah, I, I, and no, the sheets. Yeah. And then the camp, what was it? Not Edgewood. What was the name in Colorado? Like, that was 1,200 houses Look, that burned I mean, down. I mean, fire season in California is going through November. <laughs> yeah, it's your, I know. It didn't, yeah, 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 it didn't used to yeah. do any of that. It's just, right. it's no, right. that's right. It's and so right. the urban interface that I would deal with is like up in the wine glass where people have the trees that come up and over. That urban interface is not what where the major impacts are anymore. The urban interface is when it comes down through the bang tails and it runs across the, the flats there at 35, 40 miles an hour as a sheet of flame and then it munches pretty much everything on the north side and if we don't have a plan for so we're developing the urban wildland boundary interface plan yeah that sounds really awesome okay mm -hmm. so I land think is yeah mm -hmm. okay. yeah and i think mm -hmm. i don't know it's such a safety thing that we don't talk about like yeah these people that have to deal with the conflict are not expendable so mm -hmm. and it's dangerous work right whether it's a bear or a fire like that's not well, and, and we just had a we just had a flood, and you're thinking differently about that after that. Yeah, right. Well, it's the natural that's aspect. That's yeah, one I mean, thing we have on the growth policy. Do we want to put that in there? Because we talked about, you know, the the Army Corps of Engineer, and there's different like agencies at different levels of government that quote regulate what happens in the floodplain. But the reality is, I think that there might be opportunity for us to be even more. Um, thinking about resilience at a local level, because there are things that those different levels of governments regulate, like what you can do where, but we could say, now that we've had a flood, do we, what do we want to allow in our floodplain? Do we want to think about like how we zone in relation to where we're we even define the, the floodplain is bigger than it was. The flood, well, we don't get, <laughs> right. we don't get to define it. We don't yeah. define the floodplain, but what communities do, and we talked, we started talking about this a little bit, I feel like, when we were talking about the growth policy, we had some conversations about, like, what do we want to let happen by the river, but right now, we just had a pretty massive flood, and do we, and we had, like, a whole, in the 90s, after they had a massive flood, there were a bunch of people that did the governor's task with the Yellowstone River yeah. Task Force, oh. yeah. and they did all this stuff, and none of it was ever implemented. Or a lot of it wasn't implemented, from yeah, my so, understanding. So, like, was, yeah. so do we want to, like, right now have conversations or put something in here when we're thinking about resiliency about our floodplain? And or if new development's going to happen, do we want to think about what does that look like? Because you can require different kinds of building, right? Like, mm -hmm. just like the interface, you can 
or you can have different kinds of things that are allowed or not allowed where you're more vulnerable right. to losing infrastructure. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of regulation on it. The 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 problem is is how it gets categorized by the Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA. So if they if they categorize it a specific way, there comes along with a set of regulations associated with that categorization. And I think we could do, I think we can do our own as well, right? And it's not a categorizing floodplain, but we can think about what are we allow. I think the can have, right. The city of Sun Valley decides that you have to use class three fireproof roofing. That's not fair. Yeah, I, no, I, no, I understand that because that's that's you're, the, you're doing it underneath your zoning regulations. Is what right, you're doing. exactly. Right. The, right. So then you have to so adjust if zoning. We need to think about that because it's some of the area that's prone, that's like. Well, then you should. Build. Then we should consider it when we adjust the zoning to reflect the growth plan. And I think, I mean, and that's. But but then when when, in the thing that we just put out about about the, urban interface, I mean that's not urban interface, but it's it's the interface with. Well, with the ETJ, really, because it isn't but, it isn't wild land out there, right? But but then the you, there's an interface with a river that's a floodplain, right? So we, right. we need to think exactly. about like buildings, right. not just like it's not the external like boundary. It's, it's something runs right the there, right sure. wherever just, that interface is, and it's a different type of interface. I'm not yeah. too worried about fire coming through the river, but I am yeah. certainly not worried about flooding up on the north side baseball field. Yeah. So, Right. Do you think that we should put anything in here about? I think it's kind of one subject. Disaster mitigation. Yeah. And that's kind of why I think it belongs in local services. This is it really is when it becomes a point is when it's a, a catastrophe. But it's not mitigation if you're planning ahead and saying, well, we're right. not going to allow like uh, a risk trailer park to point. go next to the, we're not going to allow like a trailer park to be built in the floodplain because. Right, because it's not allowed. Because, but I mean, even if like FEMA or whoever the Army Corps would allow it, doesn't mean that we should allow it, right? Like, right, the city decided it's not allowed. Right, so do we need to look at some of those things? Is what I'm wondering. So I think there's separate issues. I think that the, the wildland boundary interface is separate than dealing with water. I mean, there could be overlap. In this case, I don't think there is, since just, the river goes through. Just trying to. Know. I, so, I I think on um, the flood, just because it's been an issue lately like the newer like if you look at the newer houses south of 89 that were required to comply with the flood zone regulations so i'm thinking of casey tippins and i'm thinking of uh i'm thinking of raymond gentry who built the the reclaim one lumber place raymond's funny he's like i'm yelling at the goddamn engineer the whole time you're making me put my foundation up how high i gotta build ramps for it Dad. he goes i was an inch and a half from the top of my foundation. And Casey Tippins, the water, he's got that house on stilts. When you drive up 89, you can see it. It's like a big, know. it's like a big mound, and then there's a house right up on it. And then there's a house on stilts next. And a house on stilts. He owns both of those. He said it was seven inches from the from right there. Yeah. So the engineer is like, I mean, they they hit it. Like if you I went up and drove up and took a bunch of photographs of the whole hospital and Watson property when it was flooding, it matches the floodplain perfectly, other than they didn't cross Swingley in the industrial park. And the hospital didn't flood, and they're not in the floodplain. They're they're right, they built exactly where they were supposed to, and they didn't get any water. Now, whether somebody didn't think through access, you know, <laughs> that's kind of a whole different conversation. But like so you're saying you think that the regulations are keeping up with it? I, I think yeah. the Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA know exactly what they're doing. Like I I think, you know, you know, people are like, well, nobody should have ever built over there. Well, you should, okay, so sleeping giant, sleeping so sleeping giant veterinary clinic right. did not flood. But the heart, but the humane society did. Yeah, Stafford right. did. Patricia Stafford did. Yeah. He built he built brand new from scratch to regulation. They didn't. Mm -hmm. So I think he said I had up water come to my very top step and just over the lip and it stopped because he's he's a friend of the company. We're like, do you need help? He's like, yeah. no, I'm dry. Mm -hmm. So I think. I I I mean, you could we could look at it and determine. I mean, more importantly, it's probably like, do you let big giant homes get built? And do you, but you know, I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of river and river access issues, but like, 
I think that. Well, you. If they're high enough, they're okay. Well, and that's the except thing. Except so, for, the, I guess the counterpoint would be like, except for when our local responders, our first responders, are doing all the emergency evacuations. Like, so it's great that their property is safe, but like when our city staff or whoever, and this is a hypothetical, is like endangering their lives because people built in a place that flooded. And now, and I'm, this is hypothetical. I'm not saying it's anybody's fault because I know that this happened to people in the county. It's just like, Kind of like fire situations when you're sending when you're having to send staff and workers into dangerous spaces to like save people's lives well the, when certain things could prevent it and that's there's a hundred like percent or like roads or like water sewer lines get damaged because we put them in a place that was vulnerable to having the infrastructure fail that's kind of one hundred percent something has to be addressed about the hospital and the access and that's going to come out of the engineer's reports yeah. and the way the roads work and that'll be the hospital not but i'm thinking but like 100 percent, that's going to have to be dealt with and in addition to that too by the way a, a couple hydro engineers i know talked about the constraint actually part of it's the railroad's fault because the constraint of the railroad bridge yeah. has mm -hmm. propagated the water to be forced up rather than out and so there's there's problems there too. So there's going to have to be a whole series so the water of engineers. Would have spilled out. It would have kept going down instead of going out and up. So there's there's problems there too. And there's an opportunity there for some connectivity issues and things like that that could be interesting in a spillway. But I, I think the I, I mean I haven't seen the I haven't seen the official reports come out from yeah. FEMA and everything else, but it's like it kind of did exactly what they said it was going to do. I mean, they didn't like. So it's like the new construction seemed to define as people who have had homes for a long time in places that probably should have never been built. The, the first place. I mean, we're, we're talking about stuff that's going to happen, not yeah. stuff that's already. I mean, you're not asking. It's, it's not to the point where you're going to ask people to. Like, like yeah. they're they're probably Carry down a nice free aisle. You can't. Right. You no. Can't. No. We're so they're, they're probably not going to like like. If I was just to bet, you're going to see the floodplain go out a little bit more, and they're going to change it from an X to I think it's an S, which is a it's going to go from a 500 year floodplain to a hundred year floodplain, which will force construction to go from three inches to four feet. Okay, and then it'll change insurance rates. Yeah, yeah. and that's but and that's by the way, by the way. By the way, the county and the city, the county and the city gave up all their rights to regulate it anyways because of FEMA's flood insurance. So FEMA issues the flood insurance. They regulate all of that and require it. And I, I just I'm think so curious about that. so they regulate what the the right to the only person in the world who issues flood insurance really there are a few exceptions is the federal government. And you have to buy it through FEMA. And then in exchange to having the right to purchase flood insurance, they get to regulate what occurs inside of floodplains. Okay. So, so the city could say, you know what, we don't want FEMA. We're going to do it on our own. But then the residents can't purchase flood insurance from the government. So that would be the thing to think about then is we're talking about zoning because we do have, right, city property that would be, or not city property, things within city jurisdiction that would be within the floodplain. I don't know if we'll have to adjust things then according to FEMA. Would we have you, to change our no? So the so are the, you no. saying are you saying though that the city could not, which is what you're saying, impose more stringent restrictions? I think you can do more stringent. I yeah, think you I can't mean, do more that's, that's really what you can always yeah. make things harder. You can always make things harder. What I'm what I'm need to. I'm just what I'm predicting. I don't think anybody's talking about making it easier. No, right. what I what I what I'm gonna predict is gonna happen. Here, I'll just issue a prediction. Ooh. So an issue a prediction. Yeah. yeah, I think the Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA are going to issue a report, a disaster report, and it's going to state a couple of things. It's going to change. It's going to change the flood zone and flood mapping to be more frequent. So they're going to go from 500 to 100 in most of those areas. They're going to extend the plane, and they're also going to recommend uh, by um, water bypass, water spillways underneath the bridges, so the bridges don't go out. In case of a disaster, and then a levy across the park, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be what comes out of it, and that will change. A levy it, where do you think? A, across the park, right across the river there, where the city owns the park mm -hmm. there, across that trail. I'm sure they'll end up putting in a stone levy, just like they did at Sacagawea 
mm -hmm. to do the same thing. And that'll be the recommendation that comes out. Of it. And what'll happen is that means that if you go to build a house, if the Watsons want to build a new house out there, they're going to have to comply with the 100 year, not the 500 year flood plan. And so our zoning and everything, we don't have to, you're saying it basically changes the building regulator, the building requirements. It changes automatically depending upon the permissible use changes and the building requirements change. So like, you know, like so if you're in a seasonal anything? floodplain, you can't build a daycare. So do we need to update, will we need to update any of our documents? No. Nope. update? No, it, it, you, you have to, when you go through the site planning process, you have to go through. So the if our zoning plan. is yeah. less than whatever the. The federal government will require us to okay. comply. Thank you. That's yep. helpful. And again, I, I think, I don't always, I don't always like agree with engineers like all the time personally, but like, I kind of like the map, I mean, the map was, was really good. Like I can show you a photo and overlay it over the map. Yeah, let's do that sometime, but not. Yeah. 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 So anyways, I don't do think, think you need we to need to talk it. about, we don't need to address it. You don't think or it's too soon. I just wonder. I don't know. I mean, Probably if they come out with a plan and they, and we don't, you don't agree with it, you can always address it. Yeah. You know what? I think we could get rid of wildland in the, and just do and just an urban boundary interface plan. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you think it'll be clear to anybody that reads it that we're thinking about fire and wildlife? I think. Why don't yeah. we just do this? Why don't we just do to address fire, wildlife, and flood, and just. There you go. Or how about waterway? Because that covers like yeah, sail yeah, and everybody else too. Flood is pretty. Well, it's strong. not flooding, flooding right now, so we don't even think about it, right? Well, flooding's pretty predictable, or pretty not predictable. It's it, it is pretty predictable. De de descriptive. It happens in spring. It's not usually, yeah. Yeah. and then sometimes other times. I will say I was shocked how good the the uh, new gate worked for the canal system. Yeah, that was crazy because the problem last time we had a flood was that Flushing's Creek and the canal flooded mm -hmm. and that started spilling the houses this time past the levee and it didn't like that thing worked, man. Yeah. Those the Army Corps engineer guys, they know how to do water. Yeah. It's crazy. Apparently my mother-in-law's place only floods even though it's like two blocks from the river and I look at it, it only floods if Flushing Creek backs up at 11th. Yeah, I'm not crazy. And other times it's like, no, it's just dry. Didn't even get water. We're good. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna. We're gonna. I think we should move to adjourn. I think we yeah. got a great document. Yeah. Email it out to everybody. Um, I think you should read it, sleep on it, and shop it a little. Yeah. Get some. Get some outside the echoes and feedback, and we'll talk on Wednesday next week. Yeah. And, and we'll we send should. Out the, you'll email it out I'll send this out. Yeah. No, that's easy. And we should. I I did send you email go. to Faith um, yesterday to get us posted for next week. I don't see it yet. I just texted her, but I'm hoping that we should be good to go. So. Right so what's our plan for the next one? We're gonna so, re review this and start to work. Yeah, another, we're pretty close to done, yeah. I think. Okay, another, close. another review. Yeah, so it'll be Wednesday, usual Wednesday meeting, one to two. I am so, I just, I'll wait. Okay, so yeah, so let's do this quickly. Black, do we have any public on the, so we don't need any public comment because there is no public on today. I do need to go through member comments. Why have any comments? That was a great meeting. For three hours, it felt pretty good. Went okay. quick. Uh, Tom? No, no, that's said everything I need to. James? Said it all. Melissa? I, I just have to say, looking at that, where we started to where we are now, I'm pretty still processing how much we've done and how. And you were gone a couple of couple of weeks yeah. in a row. Yeah. But I mean, just like looking at where we started, what we had when we started and where we are now. The, this is a much more meaningful document. It goes very balanced and I'm very um, grateful to all of you for doing this together. Thank you.